<laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to the Chenzor Dynasty. Let me know if you guys can all hear me and everything like that. Oh, where are you going, kitty? Just like that. Bashful already. Doesn't Don't want to be on camera. All right. Welcome, everybody. Happy New Year 2020. Oh, yeah. Oh, shout outs to Drunken <laughs> Banana and Nutacon for the continued subscription. 33 months each, actually, for both of them. Very impressive. <laughs> Nicely done. Um, but uh, this is the first stream of 2020, in case you guys are new to the stream. Uh, I am James Chen. I am the host of the Chenzor Dynasty over here. Although I'm pretty sure most of you guys here have been here before. Happy Sam Show 2020, uh, Big Tummy Dummy. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to see this camera's a little choppy here. I'm trying to figure out why the camera's a little choppy. It might just be because this is an old Logitech. Maybe I should get a new one or something like that. Hey, you know what, Big Tummy Dummy? That is not something you say to Californians, okay? That is not something that you say to Southern Californians, okay? You don't say, may earthquake bring us luck. <laughs> that is not uh, something that Southern Californians will agree to, so. I can get a little caffeine into myself over here. Um, Fun way to start off 2020 with some uh, weird cases of insomnia, but I think it's just mostly because of the crazy sleep schedule I had in December. I couldn't quite get it fixed during the break and everything like that. Woke up early today on very little sleep. Going to see if I can get myself tired so I can fall asleep at a, at a normal time. I am ready for that Teppin. As soon as the new Teppin stuff, dro dro stuff drops, I will probably stream... Uh, some Teppin stuff. I've really got to figure out why this camera so choppy. Does it look like it's choppy to you guys? I don't have any dropped frames registered over here on my XSplit, but it might just be that my camera is really bad right now. I mean, my, my PC has always just had weird problems with the USB. I, I feel like the USB is not necessarily great or anything like that, but... um. Basically what I want to do here today, instead of just kind of doing the normal, you know, 15 minute Chen reactions kind of thing and then going on from there, just kind of want to uh, go a little bit nostalgic on 2019, talk about all the stuff that happened, all the highlights from 2019 and everything like that, and uh, just kind of talk about a lot of the stuff with you viewers because that's what I'm more interested in right now. I want to know what you guys enjoy what you guys had fun with but uh as i give people time to to to, to jaunt on in to kind of uh, uh amble on into the chat as i usually say we've got uh 16 viewers it looks like right now maybe more but uh we'll just give time for people to to, to come on in here and everything like that just kind of want to talk about uh, you know 2019 a little bit and just uh i know at the for the last stream of last year i kind of talked about what to look forward in 2020 <clears throat> and one of the things that i did talk about you know was the idea of you know uh having all these like uh world tours kind of step up their game so i'm kind of excited for that as well uh we aren't done with all the world tours yet by the way uh dragon ball yet still has to finish and then uh mortal kombat is still going to take place in march or april or something like that i think it's one of those two but um <clears throat> Yeah, there's going to be a lot of exciting things going on this year, uh, not even just in fighting games for me. Obviously, I've kind of stepped into the, 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 the Teppan Kool-Aid. I drank the Teppan Kool-Aid now. I've been really playing that a lot, so I'll be trying to stream that a little bit more this month uh, just so you guys can watch my progress in that. Uh, Tetris, the classic Tetris World Championships is ramping up. It's been shown on national TV here and in Canada as well. And every time it gets shown in those in, in different places, everybody seems to find it amazingly addictive and enjoyable. Um, also, uh, oh, yeah. shout outs to Canada. Thank you for <laughs> uh, Tap2GG for the continued subscription there. <clears throat> um, but yeah, it's... Um, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff going on even outside of fighting games. But of course, for me, fighting games is the main thing. So that is where my focus is. That's where I'm going to be trying to, you know, do as much as I can. Season 5 for Street Fighter Five so far has been looking fantastic. 
the Akuma Tempin expansion has not dropped yet. That will be dropping, uh, as someone else said, I guess 1 a.m. tonight. <clears throat> I've seen some of the new preview cards yet, and there's some <laughs> very wild things happening in the world of Tepin. And so I'm really curious to see how the new meta is going to go, because it is really going to get completely, completely uh, dialed up. It's just going to become so wacky, the stuff that they're coming up with. I think they've had the, they've, the game has been out long enough that they know the, some of the crazy things that they can do, so... Yeah, it's going to be wild. And yeah, the new Sam Show character is going to be come out. Yep, I saw that legendary purple. <laughs> Two locks all empty slots. I saw the new legendary Felicia, which I'll probably just have to craft because it's Felicia. And um, she actually, if she ascends, she takes the two things in your EX pocket and immediately plays them. So, if you actually have a trans and you have a really nasty card in your e So, you have the ability to pull e cards into your EX pocket with the requel card, right? So, you can take the requel card, pull one of your best cards into the EX pocket, a trans it, copy it, then ascend to Felicia and throw out those two things. So, for the cost of Felicia, Felicia, you can play two cards in your EX deck onto the field right away, and that's going to be totally terrifying. So, oh man. But again, uh, just going to wait for people to come on in and everything like that, and then we'll get started pretty soon. Like I said, I really just kind of wanted to talk about um, the, the 2019 year and what you guys found exciting. Obviously, you know, the biggest story in all of the fighting game community and probably all of esports, honestly, one of the biggest stories was the rise of Pakistan um, in Tekken 7. And that's obviously uh, probably the most significant story. Had a lot of really, really cool stuff uh, happen with that storyline. <clears throat> really, really uh, happy to see that kind of play out and everything like that. Now, a lot of people have kind of talked about, oh, maybe Pakistan didn't, you know, step up at the TWT or whatever like that. I mean, that's all a bunch of baloney. Uh, Pakistan definitely showed up. They won the last chance qualifiers, right? And sure, none of them made the top eight, but still, that those pools were brutal. It was just, it's crazy, and TWT never goes how you think it's going to go, right? No one probably had Chikarin picked as the guy who was going to uh, take that at this point. Yeah, the net, the rollback net code is definitely one of the big topics and discussions of 2019. And hopefully, you know, a lot of the uh, Japanese developers will start taking note of that, especially now that, you know, the entire GGPO is out there for free. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's just they can take it and plug it into their game and it's great. Whee! You know, it's still going to take a lot of work, but at least the basis of it, they can look at it, they can figure out how to use it, and uh, they have samples basically out there on how to integrate it with their stuff. But you have to kind of have it coded since, the you know, you can obviously change it if you have the time and the money and the effort and the manpower like, like NRS did for MK10, for MKX. But, um, you know, oh, without yeah. that, shout outs to <laughs> Says Ladies Killer. For the subscription. Uh, how do I want it to go? I mean, the way that I want it to go, Lady Lady Skiller, or Lady Skiller, or sub, I'm, I'm not even sure how I'm supposed to pronounce that. Am I pronouncing it right? Suz Ladies Killer, or is it Suz Ladies Killer, or... Uh, in any case, it's, it's pretty straightforward where I want the FGC to go. I just want it to grow. I just want it to get bigger. I just want it to get better. I would like to see uh, more world tours, um, you know, really panning out. You know, as much as the world tours, I know some people aren't necessarily fans of them, the esports and favors the people who are sponsored, etc. Et There's good and bad, but, you know, the, the, the world tours really do help keep scenes alive. You know, for example, like Samurai Showdown, uh, I know that world tour, the SNK world tour, has been running into a lot of bumps and everything like that. But if it was working out, if they can suss that out, if they can create a better world tour and get that many more people excited, I think we would be in a very good situation. Not even just prize pools, but for bragging rights, right? 
I mean, who doesn't want to be? Who doesn't want to call themselves the 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 world champion for Samurai Showdown? Who doesn't want to call themselves the world champion for Tekken World Tour? Sure, Tekken World Tour gave seven thousand prize pool last year. Obviously, it raised a lot more for Chikorin, right? But still, as Rangchu, you know, you didn't win as much last year. But do you care? Is that really that big of a deal? Now that you can call yourself now and forevermore Tekken World Tour Champion using the bear, using Kuma, using Panda. I mean, if I was Rangshu, I would be over the moon and ecstatic. You know, those kind of things help drive the competition. And as much as the fighting game community thrives on having different games, on multiple games, right? So the reason why Evo is so great, Combo Breaker is so great, you know, CEO is so great is because they're not run by one game, they're a celebration of all the games, right? Frosty Faustings is coming up in a couple of weekends, and Frosty Faustings is known for having as many fighting games played as possible. And that's one of the greatest things about the fighting game community is that we're not run by one game. We're run by multiple games, and we like that. However, you know, for the companies to be able to uh, show their support for the community, for the companies that make the games be able to, you know, give back to the community and everything like that, I feel like these world tours are very important because that allows them to flex their muscle on how to help the community and help and give better prize pools and and you know they can afford to give out the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars you know prize pools like Tekken like Street Fighter etc etc and that's what makes it for a, a sustainable living so you have the world tours for the people that are trying to make this thing kind of a sustainable living and then you have the actual community run events to celebrate all of the fighting games it's a really nice kind of give and take I don't want one to ever overtake the other you know what I mean and if I even did have a choice I'd rather have the community stuff overtake it right I'd, I'd rather have the combo breakers the evos the frosty faustings the CEOs be the big deal and the world tours be secondary that's always going to be how it is to me and you talk to players like punk and they'll tell you every time that they would rather win evo than they would rather win capcom cup because evo has that history it has that prestige right and so uh, capcom cup is more about the money evo is more about the prestige and you know that's kind of the situation that we have and, and that's meaningful to me you know it's meaningful to have uh both of them right yeah jesu exists in japan that's a problem but you know uh, we'll see how that pans out. Um, we'll find out more, I guess, as the year progresses on how that's going to limit people and such. Um, for me, these things should become standard in all fighting games. Rollback netcode, crossplay, and multi-platform release. Okay. Uh, to talk about that a little bit, um, crossplay... I'm not sure if it's changed now because of the way that, um, you know, some of the companies like Sony and Microsoft are trying to start to try to play a little bit more nice, you know, and having people be able to play against each other. But the reason why CFN exists is because they needed CFN to allow crossplay, right? They, they weren't allowed at the time to host it on the PlayStation servers. And so they had to host it on their own servers, and that's why they have the maintenance where they take things down and all sorts of things like that. Crossplay, I, I don't know exactly the. I, I mean, obviously, coding crossplay is not the problem. As long as your game can interpret the messages being sent by whatever server it's talking to, that should be fine. As long as the consoles and machines can talk to each other, that's fine. It's just whether it's allowed or not, right? I don't know what NRS is doing to implement their crossplay if they're creating their own servers or if it is just now to the point where Sony and Microsoft are just allowing their machines to talk to each other. Right now, I think the only crossplay they're implementing is... Uh, what was it, PC to Xbox, or was it PC to PS4 that they're implementing right now? <clears throat> oh, Evil Japan is still around, uh, Smelly Beetle. That's coming up in, at the end of January. It's, uh, it's gonna, Evil Japan is in three weekends, not this weekend. 
This weekend is empty, as far as I know. Uh, next weekend is Frosty Faustings, and the weekend after that is Evo Japan. So that'll still be happening. So that's definitely uh, going to be a big event as well. Um, Smash Ultimate there at Evo, I think, has had like record-breaking entry numbers or something. It's like ridiculous over there. Uh, B Mikey P asks, do you think were Capcom ever able to maintain multiple games at once, say Street Fighter and a you know versus or Dark Star game, they could capitalize on the duality of them via Capcom Cup? Uh, I mean, if it was Marvel, if it was Marvel versus game, they would not be able to put it in the Capcom Cup. Probably it would probably have to be its own separate thing, where everything is approved by Marvel. Uh, if they were to make their own secondary game, so let's say they made a new Rival Schools, let's say they made a new Dark Stalkers or whatever like that, yeah, they could definitely have both of them be run at the Capcom Cup. You know, I was hoping that 30th anniversary would kind of resurge a bunch of things and a bunch of people would actually, you know, the Capcom could start running, you know, uh, old school Third Strike and Alpha 3 and Super Turbo tournaments. Uh, kind of as many events along the Capcom Cup. However, um, it just the interest in all the events didn't didn't pan out as much as I think a lot of people, or as much as something like Capcom obviously would need to justify putting that money into those kind of events. That's always one of the hardest things. Uh, yeah, Capcom Cup had that Marvel. That one Capcom Cup had that Marvel, but again, that was, uh, man, that was tough. Because they had to deal with so much red tape in those situations. Every time they tried to make a decision about anything for that, uh, for that uh, Battle for the Stones. Like it was, oh, yeah. hey, shout out to James the Powerhead. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Madonna Putana. I don't know what that means, James, but I will... Accept it. <laughs> I mean, Dark Stalkers is one of those things that's, you know, kind of risky. Are there a lot of people who want Dark Stalkers as much as people say? There's always that situation. Everybody always says they want something, and then when it comes out, no one buys it. And then everyone's like, what happened to all the people who said they wanted to buy this thing? And so Darkstalkers has that potential to come out with a new Darkstalkers and then no one wants to buy it and everybody gets mad, etc., etc. For me personally, I'm kind of okay with Darkstalkers being dead because uh, it's such a beautiful game. And I talked about this on Twitter very recently where I just kind of talked about how the game just has this atmosphere, this beautiful, beautiful kind of artistic merit to it like there's something about the way that game is created that it feels so gosh darn artistic that it was created more for the art than for anything and it's really hard to justify that these days especially with AAA titles that cost so much damn money to make now and everything like that like a lot of people don't realize it's just it's not as like, you can't get video games these days with a skeleton crew like you could back in the days and make big titles like that, right? Now you need production up the wazoo unless they're making independent games, right? And uh, I would like to see Darkstalkers actually made by an independent company because I feel like they could actually put the love into it. But at the same time, you know... Uh, I don't know if that would cut it these days. It's in, it's The video game industry is just in a weird position where there's no middle ground game anymore, right? You have the AAA titles and then you have the indie titles. And it's like it. Like you don't have, like back on the Super Nintendo days or on the Nintendo days, you could just be some ragtag little group, make some game and it turned out to be amazing and it became a super popular game and it was super big. It just doesn't seem to happen that way anymore. It's, it seems really weird. It seems really weird. Um, Maximilian was saying that he wished more FG devs would try to make more single or double A titles. Yeah, that's absolutely true. But how do you justify that? Uh, another reason why, in my opinion, so many game companies make DLC is because video games are created with a brand new engine every single time, right? You basically have to create this brand new game. Oh, Pepsi sponsored stream. 
I gotta push that off of there just so, you know, Coke can give me a bunch of bits and I can be like, Coke, oh my God, are you serious right now? You know, so I have to move that off of the, 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 the screen. Yeah, Skullgirls, for example, is a perfect example. You can see kind of the art and the love uh, that's put into that game, right? There's a lot of uh, uh, tenderness that went into that game. And, you know, uh, the, the problem is now when you create a brand new game, you're creating a bunch of resources for that game, right? So let's say you make a God of War game. You create all these monsters. You create this battle system. You create all this stuff. Everything that you've created is basically kind of for that game. If you want to make a new game, you basically don't get to reuse a lot of those resources, right? Which is a weird kind of situation. And so what happens is you really got to make it worth it so you've got to, you know, make the DLC, extend the story, try to get more money off of it, really milk that engine for what it can do, right? And so if you're making A titles or double A titles, how do you do that, right? What is the, you still have to go and create a new video game with new rules and new engines and all this stuff like this. And you got to create all this nice music for production and stuff like that. I'm just, I'm wondering if there even is a space for an A or a double A title or if they can even be made. Can you make a video game kind of like at that budget or do you just only make indie games now? Because if you make an A or a double A game, do they automatically already just look like indie games? It's, it's very interesting. I'm not sure exactly you know, how the gaming industry lives these days. I don't know enough about the gaming industry to, to really say. So, uh, sprites to make a comeback for Capcom would be very, very hard. Uh, sprites are expensive. They're a lot of work. And not only that, they do not allow for a lot of dynamics uh, in, in cinematics and supers and stuff like that. Like, if you want to see what the best you can get out of cinematics for supers is, you look at KOF 13, right? KOF 13 had a lot of great screen shakes and zoom-ins and stuff like that. But you just don't get the crazy camera pans that you can get from, you know, 3D models and stuff like that. You're not going to get the cool, you know, crazy uh, super animations that you can get uh, from 3D graphics. And so... Uh, sprite based is is still possible but it's also just like not practical I guess in a way yeah even SNK doesn't use it even SNK doesn't use it so yeah you can definitely remaster reuse and change some stuff that exists but um, you know you still have to make a completely different game right you're not going to take the engine and make a game that's very similar to a previous game that you created because that's the whole trick with video games they've got to have very big differences otherwise if you're playing a game that's super similar to another game you know you kind of get called out on that a lot of the times so right exactly i mean you can say that all you want ramen rider but that you're not the audience right you are not the audience like i can tell you what the audience is like, I'm just going to, like, this is the audience right here, right? That's the audience. I mean, when you look at that and you're like, oh, my God, that looks so goddamn sick. And you can pan the camera and do all sorts of crazy things like that. That's what gets people excited, right? That's what people gets people who are casual audiences to, to buy the game. It's, it's really crazy to imagine, but the fighting game community is probably a tiny fraction of the people who actually buy the fighting games, right? Mortal Kombat certainly is not... Uh, making its money off the FTC. <laughs> They're making their money off of everybody else who just want to see fatalities and, and brutal gore and all that stuff like that. So, you know, we can sit there and talk about who cares about all that panning shit and everything like that, but ev actually, most people do. Most people do care about that, and that's always one of the toughest things about fighting games. You know, it's one of the toughest things about... Uh, trying to make games these days. Yeah, exactly. We're kind of niche. We're kind of stuck in that situation right now. 
Um, yeah, and you can't make chun costumes with sprites, right? You literally can't because uh, you're basically making new sprites. You're basically, you're basically creating brand new characters, you know, for that to be reused on an existing character, right? It almost feels better just to make it a secondary character, right? And, and try to give them different moves or something like that. That's the hard thing. I mean, the, sure, costumes aren't also easy to develop, but you look at something like Soul Calibur with the character creation and how you can put stuff on people and just count on physics to be able to animate it and stuff like that. So you can put a stationary object on somebody, give it the texture, uh, physics, you know, reactions that, you know, tweak some values to make sure the ribbons flow the way you want them at the speed that you want them to flow and stuff like that. And then the character can move and all of a sudden they have that outfit on them, right? And it, it's, it's that much easier because now I don't have to animate Chun-Li's dress in every single position. You just put a dress on her that has the physics and then the physics takes care of the animation. You know, it's just, it's built into the engine and that's how much easier it is to do. Um, yeah, uh, exactly, Choi Sauce. Look what happened to MVCI, right? We can talk about how much we don't care about graphics all we want, but MVCI's graphics absolutely killed the game. The game was just so bland and gray and dark and and ugh, and nobody liked it. Nobody wanted to, 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 to play it. KOF 14, same thing. The game came out, was ugly. And no, dude, every time I think about MVCI, it's dark. It's washed out. There's no color in the game. I don't know why. Every time I picture it, that's how it looks to me. Because remembering MVC3 and the sparks and the craziness and just lights and flashing and just energy and all this stuff everywhere, uh, Every time I picture MVCI, it just feels so washed out, so gray to me, like no color, like everything has this weird monochrome filter on top of it and stuff. MVC3 is so pretty, dude, so pretty. And that's the toughest thing, right? So how can we create uh, a single A? mono a double a games anymore these days i don't know if there's such a thing because i feel like that's the weird price point that kind of makes it so that you can't justify a company to make a game like that anymore right do you take this much money and make an a title do you cut the budget down to this and make an indie title or do you just grow the budget by like this and make a triple a title right so when you're here there's no guarantee that you're going to make any money off of this game. So why would they want to risk this much money to make an unknown property and see how well it's going to sell? When well, you could make a AAA title and blow it out the water and make it just look amazing. Even if it's a brand new franchise, even if it's a sequel, you can do something crazy and then give it the production and the advertising and all this stuff. If you just use this much money for an A title or a double A title, how do you justify that to a company? How do you tell a company we're gonna risk this much money when you can add this much money and really go for broke or take the budget away and make something indie, which is it really distinguishable between indie and A, you know, and stuff like that. It's a, it's a really weird situation and I don't, it's, I, I hate the way that the game industry is right now. I don't know if there is a lot of you know, single A title games and stuff like that. So, um, it's kind of weird, kind of a weird situation. But, uh, you know, um, like I said, I, one of the things that I did want to do here on stream was talk about some of your guys' favorite matches from 2019. And so, you know, if you guys are in the chat and you have any matches that you thought from 2019 that were amazing, and you have YouTube clips, 
you know, I would be more than happy to, to take a look at them and watch them and everything. The reason why I have this Dragon Ball picture up here already is because one of my favorite matches uh, from the year, which we can't watch the whole thing because it's 30 minutes long, but it is the grand finals to uh, Evolution. Rixta versus Knee, combo breaker. Okay, Arslan Ash versus Knee. Those are some good ones right there. Let me copy and paste these in here. Uh, Rixta versus Knee. Uh, Arslan Ash versus Knee. Evo 2019. I mean, Arslan Ash versus Knee was an interesting matchup because I felt like Arslan kind of blew him up, didn't he, in grand finals? Uh, Sacktap versus Joey D, huh? Sacktap versus Joey D. Interesting. What a, uh, at, at Evo? Which which game? I mean, you're you're talking about uh uh UMVC three, right? You're talking about UMVC three. I'm assuming. Um, or is that MVCI that you're talking about? Kazunoko versus Justin Wong and Sam Show. Yeah. Um, Sam Show, Kaz versus Wong, Evo. Wow, a lot of Evo matches over here. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's what I was saying. The that I, I felt like yeah, Idom Cat Punk was a really really good match. Of course, of course. Uh, do you think twenty twenty will be the year of a younger generation taking over, just like how Idom and Punk and younger players are stepping up? SF five specifically. Uh, I don't necessarily believe so I, I believe that every time we think that the uh, older generation usually comes back in and does a lot of good stuff uh, red blade versus clear lamp I'm assuming that is uh, BB tag or is that Eunice that was BB tag right BB tag red lamp uh, red blade versus CV 2019 uh, Arslan versus Jimmy J. God, you guys are coming up with a lot of good stuff here. Uh, Jimmy J at Evo Japan 2019. Oh, that was Unist. Okay, so it's not Unist. It's uh, not BB Tag. It's Unist. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. CEO talk. Oh, that was a good one. That Teresa versus Hotashi one. Oh, gosh. Okay, okay. Uh, GG Exert Rev to uh, Hotashi versus uh, Teresa C. Otaku 2019. All right, okay. Let's go ahead and just let's 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 bounce through some of these. Let's see if I can find some of these actually. Uh, Combo Breaker 2019 Rixta. Versus me. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, here we go. When you're underwater for months at a time, some things are just uh, out of your control. It's gonna be SoCal's America. Can you guys hear this? Versus the is it loud? Knee. Or is the oh, volume man. okay? Is this, this really one, loud volume wise? Yeah, played before at Evo Japan. Mm -hmm. Not good for Rickster. It was definitely not good for Rickster. I'm gonna but turn the volume like, down just a little bit. Here. The fact that he's up on this stage again shows some advancement, shows some progress in what Rickster has been able to do even since Evo Japan. Of course, yeah, and he's definitely done his homework since that loss. You know, he knows what beat him last time. Uh -huh. He's prepared for that as well. Uh, so I'm very interested to go. see what goes on here. All right. Well, Pretty sure we're going to get that Akuma pick coming from Rickster. Yeah. We talked about the fact that he likes to do these. Uh, these and shout out to Combo Breaker as well. One of the best things is they always have the commentators sitting in the back like that. I always like that. That they're just kind of right there in the, the, the audience. And let me know how my volume is compared to your guys, compared to this. Okay, all right. All right, Who I like this one guy. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. He's already a traitor. I knew it was going to be you. I can tell by the colors. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if you want Rickster to take it, make some noise, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, that MK right, okay. first the 15 was super phone, good, so too. Powering him up. Oh, yeah, definitely. You guys are going to be powering this man up. Man, it's coming from it's coming from way back there. Way back there. From way back there. What Coming event was that at? Huge. What event was that MK first to fifteen at? Right, that was at Combo Final Breaker, Final wasn't Final it? Fury coming out of knee. He's like, nobody wants me to win. <laughs> nobody wants me to win. How about Brian Fury?
Yeah, Florida versus oh, Texas. Right yeah, that thing was super good. I oh, almost died. Crap. I didn't know he was gonna. <laughs> Steven choking over here on water. It's just water, Steve. Here we go, up. guys. Make some noise. It's gonna be Rickster versus Knee. This is in America. We gotta support this man. Let's go. Yo, Knee with Brian Fury. This is what I came to see. Sorry, Rickster. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Oh man. Yeah, we have not seen him play Brian for quite some time. Even all weekend. We see Geese, we see Devil Jam, we see we've even Steve seen Fox, Steve. Not what I want. This is what Usually I want he uses right Paul Phoenix in this matchup against Akuma. I wonder what the difference is. Maybe it's something in Rickster. It's something in Rickster. Maybe it's something about Rickster, man. Maybe he's about to put something in Rickster. Defense looking pretty good so far. Gets the float. Good pickup. Pretty good damage. Gonna take the Oki here. Oh, back one. Rickster in rage. Hatch. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm oh, setting no. something up here, guys. Get up her. There we go. Yo, me with Brian this is tight. Nobody saw this coming, I can tell you that. <laughs> no problem, I got this guy. No. Oh, I did, I did, Tubo. I did get your text. I did. Spacing. Not doing so well on Ricky's side. Yeah, shout out to Rixta, by the way. Rixta, uh, MYK, doing great job for commentary for the TWT. But then Rixta also still being able to get to top eight like this uh, at Combo Breaker, I think is super, super cool. The minute he tried to get that down four. That is actually so good against Akuma, right? We were talking earlier about JDCR's defense against... Yeah, it'll be curious to see. I mean, obviously, Leroy is, and people are talking about how strong he is. But even at KIT, uh, he got second place, right? That was second place that he got. Still has a bar to work with later in the round. One plus two, no. Back three. Spacing is looking really good. Yeah, Leroy looks really, really strong right now. Goes for the focus just to fake him out. Yeah, this this match is just really hilarious for those people who don't know. Uh, this is one of the coolest matches just because of the way that Rixta reacted with some of the stuff that happened in here. In fact, he even said that most of the time when he actually plays at tournaments, he doesn't um, end up like realizing like he can block out the audience. He can kind of. Ooh, okay. That's what he gets for being too close and didn't low block. Got the clean hit on the crouching medium kick in the fireball. And this is exactly what he did against JD Shaw earlier today, right? Lost the first two rounds, brought it three straight back to win the first game there. Oh, mm. wow. He is ready nice for mix-up. Uh-huh. See him jabbing out a lot. We've seen Float a lot him out of that demon from. flip right there. Not Very common up, tactic to defeat out. Akuma for trying to flip at you. I mean, the nice thing about that for Akuma is he really doesn't lose that much damage from it because it is a jab out of the air, and those floats usually don't do that much damage. But yeah, the way Rickster reacted when something specific happens, if you guys haven't seen this match yet, when something specific happens, he said it was the, one of the first times that he notices the crowd, and it just kind of like broke him out of that focus. Like you could, when players play up there, a lot of times they kind of block out the audience. They, they, even as loud as the audience can get, they try to make sure that they kind of block them out and not think about where they are in the crowd and all that stuff like that. So, so down to the loser bracket of this tournament was Rang Chu, who's now sitting in the winner's final. <laughs> Rang Chu. And of course, John Ding was sitting up. <laughs> and there's that head tilt, the fighting game head tilt. <laughs> you know, they're thinking. It's a head tilt. It's like the Tetris exhale. The headphones off. You got the power. Yeah, but gonna go to the Tetris exhale, man, because you hold your breath so much when you're trying to do the clean, and then when you finally clean all the way down. Might be a last chance. Make some noise, guys. You got to support this man. Yeah, Rick actually watching his own match. Uh, I saw clips of that on Twitter, and it's hilarious. And keep in mind, too, Nia, of course, is one of the strongest players, was considered the best unbeatable in Tekken, but like two years ago. Obviously, the, the parody has increased a lot. Rixta is a strong player in from America, but has never been considered one of the, the strongest players in America. Oh, drops the combo. All right, catch him with the low float. No jab out of the air. Interesting. Focus canceled. Oh, it went. Nice one, two. Ricky on the board in the second round. Good reaction. Hey, what's up, Zero Star X? Thank you. You have a happy New Year's as well. 
uh, uh. Couldn't quite get him there. Oh, good sidestep that way. Not only was that sidestep good to avoid that, but it also put Rixta to the wall as well. God, look at that damage there. This was a bef this was pre patch Akuma too, so he builds a lot more meter as well. Oh ah, the unblockable. Anakin versus Knee. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh god, that's so terrifying! Yeah. The nice thing about uh, Brian is that when he gets the um, unblockable, he gets to do a, a lot more damage at the wall for an easier timing combo. The, oh god, what a sidestep! And gets him back turned as well. Ooh. Hmm. God, he is ready for that demon flip every time. Twenty seconds just about left. He has a chance. Goes for the jump in. He's not the ready. Goes the over. Oh my gosh! Time winding down here. Life bar's about even. Oh, oh yeah, that's it right there. Let's go, Rickster. One more round. <laughs> one more round. <laughs> Game two. Four, four, four with. Oh my God! Snake, snake right edge. Snake. Oh, the get the jump in. He's got some meter and he's gonna spin it. Uh. Oh, oh, okay. I, I, thought, I always thought that he just went for the oh, he went for the wall carry variation basically. No, drop combo for it. So this is the situation. Oh God, nice. I don't think this was the. Was oh this the. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a good time. I don't remember if this was the first one. I feel like there was something else that came before this. Oh, man. Knee sticking it out with Brian Fury. Let's go. Die. Yeah, the nice Sorry. thing about that is Man, that the the like I mean that, that standing one into S R K obviously very punishable, God. not very hit confirmable, but it makes his punish so good. Oh man. Good choice. I like the track and move right there just in case he tries to sidestep. Oh, no. Mm, Trying scary, to go scary. for the whip punish with the 1-4. Not today. Mm, down that three, wasn't the first clean hit. Yes. Yeah. Punish while yeah. standing four, four. Look at the focus move. Mm -hmm. hey, children, gotta be Rix is playing right really well. Look at that. Yo, Even crouching yo, under like that. Dang. Yo, Game the three. The lead in the set versus knee. Versus knee. He had the lead in the set. Yo, what? Don't sleep on knee. Don't sleep on knee. You got to stay focused here. Okay, focus, cancel, just to keep it safe. Just Literally got to stay focused. Yo, man, Akuma's from a 2D game. He can do it. God, he hasn't gotten hit by any orbital. That's been super impressive. Nia's nee like fished with that, and he's managed to block it or just be out of range every single time. Oh, my God, right kick Tatsu. Oh, no, no. He's actually successfully baited. He successfully baited. No big punish. Oh, no, too far, too far. No clean hit. Hey, all the way to the wall. Now, how did he get up here? Oh, oh shh. Ah. <laughs> all right, all tied up. Hey, thanks, man of peerless might. How's it going? Oh, down three. Oh, has your kick. Do it again. I dare you. Come on. What are you scared? Do it. The dash jab punish from me was so sick there. It was a single jab. Down four one. Back two, no. Oh. The blend's on the ground so well right now. I love the focus sound. 
They have a neat, good lead here, 30%. A lot of time left. Rich the winning leader on the board. <laughs> oh. Man, this crazy now. Look at him. He's playing like a 2D game. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God. Wow, he just went for that sweep. I think he just thought yeah, Nia was going to come in. That's so much of this game is just reading when the opponent's going to try to come in. Oh! But it's a float again. Hit out of the air, so low damage for that. Because you've seen Akuma do a lot more damage than that. Oh, God. Oh, what? Backwards hot kick. Hey, shout out to Peter0611. <laughs> Ring fit adventure. There you go. That's the variant that I always see. See, that's what the damage we're talking about. He's gonna be okay. I'm getting hard attack. He's got full meter. Needs getting done. Oh! oh! <laughs> there it is. And that's the moment right there. I'm gonna go back. This is the moment right here. The invincibility on the super right here that he just busts out of nowhere like this to go through the rage drive like this. And then what actually what you don't see here is he does this. And you'll see this in another view. I forgot who got the view of it, but you'll act Rixa actually looks back at the crowd. And that's when he covers his mouth, and that's when the, the, the that wall breaks where he's like, shit, I'm in a tournament. It was like you just the, the noise is all just kind of white noise in the back, but then all of a sudden it just all came rushing into him, is one of the things that he said, and he was just like, oh my god, and it was just like so crazy, dude. Oh man. I'm not gonna drop the combo this time. Ah, damn, look at the damage. And then, okay. Oh, down oh, four. Oh, I tried three. to jump and didn't land. Nice jab. Gotta stay composed here somehow. Oh, oh. is that not enough? Oh, I just. The jump he did for the trick. Oh, <laughs> he just ran out of steam. Oh, he just ran out of steam, dude. <laughs> Yo, Rixa, I, I, Rixa, I see you, baby. I see you, baby. I see you. But Nii gonna be staying in the tournament. Moving on. Bringing out the Brian Fury for everybody. Well done to Nii. <laughs> That's such a good match. <laughs> oh, man. No, actually, Akuma got nerfed just because... He's too powerful with the lows and he gained meter really fast. And when he has meter, the amount of damage he does is just, it's kind of ridiculous. It's kind of ridiculous the amount of damage that he does whenever he um, hits you with that. Let's see, what else, what do I, what else do I want to see over here? Let's take a look at this one over here. <clears throat> Let's see, three. Now, I didn't get uh, the response. Was it UMVC3 or was it uh, MVCI that we're talking about Sack Tap versus Joey D? Um, I'm assuming it was MVC3, right? Ah, yeah, here we go. Grand Finals. This is probably the one that we're talking about here. It's extremely hard. To wow, this is 20 minutes long over here. This is 20, 20 minutes long here. So we'll probably jump through this a little bit as much as we can. Condition your opponent to do so let's do this over here and go over here. Um, Sack Tap versus Joey D. Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3. Here we go. Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3. Do what you want to oh, do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because you know? there's too many opportunities that if something does Looking at the, sack tap. Okay, the formulas and all the, the Oh <laughs> yeah, just calculating in their minds yeah. and everything going. But here we go guys. This yes. is grand finals. Oops, hang on a second. This is really loud all of a sudden. So let me turn this one down a little bit here. 
Well, there could probably be a lot of like award ceremony stuff as well. No, it actually goes for almost the entire 20 minutes. Since this is grand finals, it's probably a reset, right? Of Evil 2019 Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. See, this is the craziest thing. Is like a lot of people early on, you know. In a reset there. Obviously, yeah. Ghost Rider seemed really good at the start. Turned out to be a pretty crappy character, but then here he is. Sacktab's using him in uh, Grand Finals of Evo. Ghost Rider. Yeah, exactly, Persia. Winner side. 2019. 2019 Marvel, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't think we'd be here. God, this, this is such moment. a beautiful but game. But this is what I mean. See, this oh, is what no, I mean no, by... No, see no, how no, colorful this game one. is? Right Look how there. bright <laughs> all the colors are. All Everything is super back. vibrant <laughs> in this game. <laughs> the, the, the swords <laughs> are bright. The fire... Look at the hit <laughs> sparks. <laughs> the <laughs> energy <laughs> bars and everything. Like, everything is so outlined and bright. And then you get to MVCI and you can't see a dang thing, dude. Oh, yeah, you're done. The hustle on Sacktab is incredible right Holy now. Holy smokes. <laughs> Sacktab has the Marvel heavens. But that's the thing, uh, Showbiz. Right a lot of people Let me tell you, haven't realized where Marvel 3 has gone here. in the past couple of years. The, the of ability to for players to just win. last so but long in neutral. And look at this. We got a freaking right. Arthur and Hagger. Arthur, it's Hagger, TV. Ghost Rider in Grand Finals of UMVC 3, dude. This is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, you're he's dead. Save his meter here. Uh 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 uh. Confirming that throw. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> nice patience. Oh, but Joey D backed up. That's rare. I feel like. Speaking of backup, he ran into the super. Right. He backed up because he was worried about Lariat. Yeah. He just didn't do anything massive off of it. It's okay though. <laughs> he still has the momentum on his side. All right, he's X Factor's X gonna run out at this point in time. He's gonna run the chip really quick. Yeah, no more X Factor, but now you've but got a Ghost wait. Rider to go up against this crazy Doctor Doom. Oh! 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 Dang! They they just go right back into it, man. There's no delay, dude. How does this last 20 minutes? This is crazy. Look at that. But this is some very satisfying Marvel Three that I'm watching. They are probably blowing up right now. Because. You know, Sacktop is giving Joey some problems. Some real problems. Oh! oh zero. Almost had him. Problems. Almost had him. <laughs> I love it. We've got a grand final that's zero doom Virgil going up against Hagger Arthur Ghost Rider. What is even happening? This is what I mean about this game. This game is ridiculous. It just got to the point where this game is ridiculous. Defense, defense, defense. Ah! You can't block forever. Oh, you can't. Not even if you're Justin Wong. It's like a mental guard break. It's like you're breaking, you're blocking, 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 but eventually, you literally just can't. <laughs> and that's crazy too, uh, uh, Rizki Fajar, or Fajar, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, is that the sprites in MVC2 aren't good at all. Like, obviously they're good, but the animation in MVC2 is really terrible. Because really? he has to work on the reset right now, you know? If you actually look at the animation of the characters from... Oh, Zero is just so crazy. Yep, here we go. That should be... Now, how does this last 20 minutes? Because the thing about it is, if you look at the animation of, like, the characters from Children of the Atom and compare them to the animations from, um from MVC2, it's night and day. Like you look at Spiral's, uh, you know, Metamorphosis Super, you look at Colossus, Colossus is just makes me sad in MVC2. It's really crazy. Push block, can he? Nope, trap, you're stuck in there. Well, how do you block that? You can't block it. It's just too much. Too many pizza cutters. <laughs> Cutting dominoes. And not Bobby enough pizza. Yeah, can he? I don't. There. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, uh, and then Arthur got picked. Oh, here we go. Can he do it? And he's gonna go into the armor too. Oh! What? What a X factor here! I guess that sort of worked. Ah! Uh.
give it to us. It's so it. delicious right uh, now. It is so good. Seasoning oh, MVC2, don't get me wrong. wrong. Oh, it is yeah. one of the greatest fighting games of all time. But, I mean, graphically, when it first came out, people considered it a, a rehash. When it first came out, people realized how ugly the game was. And the reason why you have to do that is you have to load less sprites in memory that way. If, you, if they had their full sprite base uh, from Children of the Atom and stuff like that, you basically could not have a 3 versus 3. So they basically had to take away half of the animation frames for a lot of the characters to make them loadable in the game. Wait, that's me. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, what is oh, happening? Yeah, this is gonna hurt. Oh, he missed. Hit will hurt right now, but almost out Agar, of the really? factor. Oh, he wanted to disrupt the momentum with the heart nice. attack. Nice defense. Oh, wait, I can't say nice block yet. Okay, okay, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One hell of a job. Oh, oh the missiles, the classic. The but, man, the plan. That's it. Oh, the bait. That's yeah. what we oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, he saved himself. Yeah, okay, that should do it right it. here. Okay. That should be the end of Hagar. There you go. Since like 2011 or 2013 yeah. or whenever. I like. think he started playing Zero probably in 2014, I think. Oh! oh. Again? Again? Did the armor break? Oh, did he mess up? Oh, yeah, that's that's the oh, end of him there. Joey D kept it together. He is. I was like, I want to see this ghost. I'm. Arthur would have. He's still not changing the team, dude. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, that Volker. Sega Saturn version of Children of the Atom was okay, but it was still missing a bunch of frames. It still wasn't good enough, to be honest with you. Because I used to play that one a lot, and I know that game was the Sega Saturn version of Children of the Atom was still significantly uglier than the arcade. If you guys actually haven't watched the arcade Children of the Atom, like, if you guys haven't actually seen that and Marvel Super Heroes, those are two of the most beautiful games ever. Oh, he got clipped by the Lariat. Oh, yeah, you could, you could tell. I don't know. We got to get through Anchor Virtual. Okay, okay. Cross up, cross up, cross up. Oh, he blocked it? We've seen it before, says Joey D. But now he has the optimal order. Thanks to Sacktap, he made that happen. Virgil, Doom. And it's definitely not over because we got that X Factor on deck. Yes, Spear Flame, I assume. Ooh, big bodies, making him spin another meter, utilizing another resource. He is going to hard tag in. Yeah, the RAM expansion was great for stuff like X-Men versus Street Fighter. I definitely had the, oh god, here comes Virgil. Yeah, he's dead, and then comes in and he's dead. So, Joey D gets the reset here, basically. There you go, the reset. So we did get a reset here. So we're back to here. Let's see what happens. Oh, Sacktap is still going to stay with this team. Okay. Oh boy, Ugh. not looking good so far. Now Joey is getting to do zero things. Whereas before, Sacktap wasn't really letting him get, get anything hmm. started. Zero things is not a great show to watch <laughs> on Netflix, no, that's for sure. <laughs> zero things. It. Yeah, they need to cancel it. Ugh. Ugh. The combos this time. Goodness Go gracious. And I think it's fair to play in a little bit of unfamiliarity in that matchup as well because Oh. He came, he was launched in the air, recovered, yeah. command dash down, and went low. Father of Marvel. Exactly. This is for you. Well, this, this, this in particular is not for you. Yeah, no, not much. Well, this character's dead. And then, oh, oh what? He got him with the headbutt! <laughs> he got him with the headbutt! Check this out! I think this is the right button I'm hitting. Yeah, on the way down. Yep, he caught him with the headbutt right here. Look at this. Up, heavy. Pow! Got him. That's amazing. Oh, here we go, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> wait. Oh, man. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ah, the no mix up, mix up. It's not over. This is the mayor of Metro City. 
Let's go. It's definitely not over, and Virgil doesn't have too many good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the one character comeback <laughs> with Hagger. How many? Dude, I just had a debate with someone on on Twitter saying, "Oh, characters with no air dashes, you can't win without them." Blah 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 blah. And here we have Sack Tap. And people were saying Arthur was one of the problem characters, and we got three characters with no air dashes in Grand Finals. Come on. Joey D respecting Pete. Eh, or okay. I've he actually doesn't have that many great options. You get a good meaty or eh, or use the fact that you could get a good meaty right. to reverse psychology right. the whole situation, which is what that was. But yeah. Joey D's upset now. <laughs> we can see it in the play. Oh, oh they drop! Oh, oh no! Do you see the delay on that? Do you see the delay on the heavy heavy? Watch this. The delay on the heavy heavy right here from Ghost Rider. So right here, he doesn't chain it right away. See, he waits it a little bit just to let zero drop in to make sure the combo connects. Oh, so good. Oh, yeah. Joey D was just cycling. Motor cycle! He was getting hit, but that drop. The, oh the my headshake God. from Joey, he of does course. not, he Yeah, cannot. no, he's upset. And I, you know, I don't blame him because he is the reigning champion. He's trying to defend his title right now. And he's, he's coming back from a, a big combo breaker win in Marvel 3. Oh, that's, no, that's, wait. Okay, it's all right. He let Virgil go. It's yeah, fine. We're going to continue yeah. this conversion on Doom. Yeah, but take, he, oh, no. Oh, that's huge no. for Joey. That's a problem. Here comes the DFC into Virgil. Yeah, when Virgil teleports like that, you actually never have to switch sides, really. That was a great bait, but he's gonna get hit. Wait, what? Oh, armor. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, it's the, what? the motorcycle has so much durability. Yeah, it's crazy. Wait, what? Interesting. Doom is bleeding, and I. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was talking about. Lose that red life. Thanks for activating the swords. Now get out of here. Oh, the option select on that so throw active. comes out with a towards so heavy. Great go. blocks. Oh, he was ready for that too. Oh, he did Virgil he did. time. Yep, yeah, here we go. Virgil time. We can't forget about Virgil's range, you guys. What the hell? Oh yeah, you're done. The lariat, but he's gonna lose okay, Hacker for right now. Oh Our boy. Three, X Factor still three. coming. He needs to get into the match. Oh, oh not gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, I Anything like you can do, I can do, I can do better, do says Virgil. You want to do a one character comeback with Hagger? I'm going to do the same thing with Virgil. Ugh. It's good. Yeah. They're just good. It's, no one said it was fair, but, but it's just good. Life isn't fair, and Virgil is part of life. See? Oh. <laughs> uh oh. Oh. My goodness. Oh, happy birthday. Oh god, it was so hard to keep both of them in there. They were flying apart in very different directions. He just raised his eyebrows like, yeah, well, I think it's where you can't dwell on your mistakes. You literally have to keep moving forward. Electricity bills paid off. Exactly. Oh, look at this defense! God, he still hasn't stopped blocking yet! Yeah, he has to respect all of this right now. Oh, got him! Found the gap, but... Nice. Oh, so good reaction. He's going for a much safer setup right there, so he could block the. the oh, nice throw and nice. Block. What a block on the it's instant overhead. Right it's all happening. Oh, oh. Uh, a lot of things was. Man, they could have made Arthur so much better if his weapons were just so much more powerful, and that gold armor didn't kill him like that. I'm sorry. What did you say? I'm just keep riding into Larry. Whoa, what happened? Everybody died. What happened? Everybody just died all of a sudden. Just keep riding into Larry. Zero. Okay, okay. What did you say? What happened here? So Joey just keeps running into Larry. Oh, I see. That's right. The combo kept going from that, and then that level three just murdered both of them. My apologies, but I'm sorry, Zach Zap. I apologize. Did I say this is gonna be hard for you? I meant. I no, meant... you should be apologizing to Joey because you definitely come yeah. to this. <laughs> I'm never gonna apologize, Joey. Look at who he's playing right now. It's still not over. It's still not over. Yeah, anchor zero, definitely a real thing, especially with Sogenmu active. Here we go. Oh Everybody god, what blocks? Hi, that time. No, no, you can't. You can't. 
Wait, he's gonna run out of X Factor. Right, so now we're gonna be at an honest oh, match so with I here Sacktap versus over. Joey D. So Arthur versus. Oh no! Oh, oh he did it! Oh my god! Oh my god! god. The... That was. Oh! Gold armor! Gold armor! Yeah, there it is! Oh uh, yeah, he couldn't release the. He didn't charge up for the armor. buster enough. Wait, wait, gold, armor, gold armor, gold armor, gold armor, gold armor. Yeah, he he didn't charge up wait, enough, so we couldn't oh get it. Oh my god. god, that was oh that was so smart. That was so smart by Sacktap. He knew he didn't have enough charge. Joey, of course he was gonna go for it. He didn't really have a choice. Yeah. Oh my Michael god. Wade did not yeah. go. Bone. Yeah, don't pull out your food. <laughs> oh my god. <gasps> Happy ball. Not quite, not quite, not quite, not Two quite. Two to one. Sack tab on match point right now, on tournament point right now. Ooh. But Joey D keeping it alive. And trying his best. Joey oh man. You see that? You see that? It's like, I'm going to roll behind you and then look at the backwards wave dash right there. Look at the backwards wave dash. That's so good. See, alive. here we go. Uh, backwards wave dash. I'm still on the same side. Oh, God. That's so broken. Even I feel bad for him right now. And I don't like zero. Oh, yeah, you're right. Joey D just dropping a lot of stuff. Oh, you see this? Like, snap. Uh, you're gonna try to dive at me, so I'm gonna back off over here and then punish you with Das Paipu! That was so sick. Yeah, it's Joey is throwing his hands up in the air, all types of things that he shouldn't be doing. Keep your hands on the stick, baby. Can I get some bog jams in the chat? Because that's literally my face this whole round. Oh. Like, oh my god, he's Wait, dead! A zero a job like that on me. It's all good though. In grand finals of a tournament too, <laughs> nonetheless. It's all good though because Sacktap is taking advantage of every yeah. single opportunity that Joey D is giving him yeah, right now. Yeah, kill Going Zero, snap, but Zero is still so yep. scary. Doctor Doom is, you know, not as effective as an anchor anyway. So. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't just go for the kill, but um, this is okay-ish. Oh yeah, he's gonna be able to convert. Oh, what a conversion! Oh, but it's still he had that side switch problem right over there. What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? He just tried to get as much damage as he could. Joey That's... D couldn't take advantage, and now we're back, kind of to the neutral here. Oh, he's gonna punish Doom as much as he can. Oh, the happy birthday! That went from winning to X. This combo, the oh. Joey D option. Oh, 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 oh man! Jeez, oh, oh, and then you're Sack dead. Sacktap had the clutches. Oh my God, it's he literally had this. it. He literally had it, Joey. It is all on this. It's so vada. Oh my God. Of how 2019 Marvel is looking. I'm ready for 2020 Marvel as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Persia. Yeah, exactly. Every year. I'm going to have I back problems. <laughs> oh, here we time. go. Same. <laughs> oh, it's oh. it's kind of small. Kind of yeah. small. Too high up in the air. I see, that's why it was so important to delay <laughs> last time yeah, to get him lower. <laughs> but you oh, see, he didn't get him low yeah. enough. Lower Too enough. <clears throat> You can't delay the heavy, heavy too much, or you can flip out in between. Oh, I like the idea. Oh my god. Uh oh. He's gonna go for the the unblockable, kind of. Ooh, he tried to, but Sacktap went for the hard tag to avoid that situation. He's gonna lariat. Dead. He's gonna lariat, right? Oh yeah, yeah. of course he is. But yeah. it's just not gonna do anything. You, the he missiles are coming. Them. Zero yeah, can just kind of go right. under the lariat, so like, it just doesn't that. work that well. Oh, this is a great so here's the question: Is how much resources <laughs> is Joey going to spend to kill him? No, it doesn't need the X factor. Just gets the loop. There you go. The majority of the MVC2 oh, roster wasn't good enough, Showbiz. They're just not good enough. Now, there are some characters who are good enough that were not explored because they thought that people thought that they were outside of human execution.
but I don't know. People's executions have gotten that much better, and this does not look good for Sack Tap. He could still level three. Ah, he just can't get level three. No, he's. Ah, that's it right there. That is it. X Factor regular super. Just do it. Yeah, just yep, yep. Don't play no games. There you go, Joey D. So does does is Sack Tap Joey D's demon? Is that actually a thing? Is that actually, is he actually considered him a demon, basically? That's crazy. But, uh, yeah, the majority of the MVC2 roster is not strong enough. They basically cannot deal with Storm, Magneto, Sentinel, or Cable. Cable is kind of like the, uh, I mean, like, like, Blackheart was considered a good character for a while. Blackheart was a strong character on a team. But the problem with it is Blackheart's most damaging super is the little up demons thing. And then his dash is he turns into the little puddle and he like kind of puddles back into the screen. And every time you flying screen the game, the guy dashes back in. Well, the problem with it was is Blackheart's dash was actually so slow that if he hit you with the up portal demon super and knocked you cable away and cable flying screen, he would land. Cable would get up before... Blackheart could finish dashing into the screen and he could jump up and air hyper viper beam Blackheart before he finished dashing and punish him for getting hit by the super which basically turned Blackheart into not a viable character in that kind of situation. Spiral can be good. So Spiral, um, Spiral obviously Duck is one of the best at it. But if you know the timing on when to push block to get out of the Spiral sword loops, uh, you could fight her. So when Duck actually beat Yipes at Evo uh, for that one comeback, Duck comeback year, the thing about it is Spiral was considered strong early in MVC2's life cycle. But then... Uh, people figured her out and she became weaker and weaker. She has no health. She dies really, really fast in that game, kind of like Strider. And she just got weaker and weaker to the point where nobody used her, where she wasn't actually significant in the meta too much. That's when Yipes kind of came in and started playing. And so he played against all the top tier, but nobody was using Spiral at the time. So nobody had taught Yipes how to get out of the Spiral Sword Traps. So he actually, when he fought Duck in Grand Finals, didn't know how to escape them. So while it looked like it was, you know, oppressive and that you can't escape the, the, the swords at all, that actually wasn't the case. It just was something that Yipes had no experience with. And so he ended up losing to Duck Doe. But then, you know, after that, he learned it. And then, uh, honestly, Spiral at that point in time just wasn't as strong because people figured out how to get through that. Cammy was considered very strong early on because she was the original Cyclops, uh, Psylocke, Captain Commando kind of assist because she was also sort of decent at point. But uh, Justin, that was Justin's first team. I think it was like Storm Sentinel um, Cammy was his original team. That was his original, I think, B5 winning team, I think. Uh, I, don't quote me on this. You'd have to ask Justin to be absolutely sure. But that was one of Justin's uh, early characters in the team because the uppercut was a really good invincible uppercut and went all the way up in the screen, so it covered a lot of good space. Problem was that uh, I think just in the end... I'm not sure what the exact weaknesses of Cammy were. Maybe just that when she's left, she's she's even worse than some of the other characters. Maybe it's because she's too diagonal and not vertical enough. Because what happens is in MVC2, once you got good at fighting against people, you knew how to air dash to avoid Cyclops. You could air dash to avoid Cammy and then attack straight down. But, Cy but C Commando hits straight up. Psylocke hits straight up. So that you can't... You can't bait those out as easily and continue attacking the opponent because they covered the, the space above them on a little bit more, basically. So, yes, DJ Blues, uh, there will be a Tuesday show tomorrow, so for sure. Oh, shoot. Is, is that David in the chat? Did David just show up in the chat over here? What's up, David? But well, yeah, that's basically uh, what happened in his MVC2. is like none of the characters are strong enough. But... <clears throat> Uh, Magnetro was a player who, who, who made combo videos with Tool Assistant, 
and he always believed Dalsim was really good, created this DVD of all the things that you could do with Dalsim if you had inhuman controls. But a lot of the things that I think people considered inhuman back in the MVC2 days are now considered human. Like, I think people have just gotten better at the techniques. And so I think people can actually handle Dalsim more. So it's actually really cool to see Justin using Dalsim because Dalsim kind of has Sentinel-ish flying shenanigans and then Storm kind of runaway shenanigans and stuff like that. And so he's he can be really scary. He's one of the characters that definitely wasn't fully explored, in my opinion. So... <clears throat> Uh, I mean, an MVC HD collection would be great, but again, talk to Marvel, that's all licenses, right? Remember MVC3 disappeared off of the store at one point in time? Marvel licenses, dude, it's, it's crazy, dude, it's crazy. Uh, was this the first game Cammy was considered good? No, yes? Because she didn't show up until... From Super Turbo, the first game she showed up again was Alpha 2 Gold for the home, which didn't really count. Then Alpha 3, she came out and she sucked. Uh, it would be... I, shoot, you know, this game came out before CVS 1? Yes, this game came out before CVS 1. So yeah, this might have been one of the first games that she was considered good at some point. Then CVS 1, she was amazing. And then CVS 2, she was ridiculous. So, yeah. But there you go. Um, dude, right? I mean, there's that 55 hit, you know, non-dizzy, undizzy in the game. They wanted to do everything to Marvel 2 to make sure it didn't have infinites. And yet, somehow, it's still crazy, dude. Yeah, at Cammy is in the PS. She was in one of the... It, was, it had to be Alpha 2 Gold. There was a special version that came out called Alpha 2 Gold that added Cammy with the Bison Super where she does the salute and Bison comes out and does the super. And then they eventually gave that super to uh, Junie in Alpha 3. We don't talk about Street Fighter the movie. We don't talk about Street Fighter the movie. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at this match here. Oops. Combo Breaker 2019 Red Blade versus Clear Lamp in Unist. So let's go take a look at this one. Under Night in In Bus EXE. EXE late ST. God, this name is ridiculous. Uh, what is this? Uh, Red Blade versus Clear Lamp. Uh, combo Breaker. This is a Grand Finals. There we go. Does that fit on the message here? Yeah, look at that, it fits, sick, okay. All right, here we go, so this is a, this is a, wow, this one goes on a while too, dang, okay. Let's jump ahead here, let's turn up the vo, so Clear Lamp uh, from Japan, Red Blade from the US, Clear Lamp is the, the Unis player who's been traveling out to a lot. I mean, he won the first, um, uh, shoot, why can't I remember the name of that tournament? The, 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 the Melty tournament. He won the first one. How many people here in this chat right now are unfamiliar with Under Night in Birth and are going to be watching this? Like, what the hell is even happening over here? Byakuya is the character that plants webs everywhere that you, that kind of forces you to block and guess like this and has enough time to throw you before you block it. 
So he can really trap you. Wagner is the character who can spend bar and stay plus the entire time. She wants to charge up her sword and her shield. You'll see every once in a while she'll charge those up. And if you ever see her do this giant super where a giant energy beam kind of falls down on her, she charges both of them up and is plus on block. So she can, as long as she has the meter, she can keep attacking constantly, basically. Okay, so the grid thing in the middle here, let me explain the grid thing in the middle. It's like a tug of war. You'll see a little white circle that fills up, and every time it fills up, that's one grid cycle. Whoever has more diamonds in their meter, in their grid meter at the bottom, wins that grid cycle. When you win that grid cycle, I'll show you guys here for a second. So watch this thing going up here. You see this thing going up, going up, feels about to fill, about to fill up, fills up. Boom, fills up. And you saw how this side glowed over here. So now basically this player has won the grid cycle. What this gives them access to is the chain shift, which is like a Roman cancel that they can activate now. They also just basically get any sort, lots of different powers as well. So if they chain shift, they take whatever's in here and add it into their super meter over here. Uh, let me do something else here. Why is this cut off on the bottom over here? That's not good. Let me do something really quick for you guys here. Uh, let me let me recapture the screen so it actually looks better so you can see the whole entire thing. Hey, this is a good year to get into Unis. Uniclair is coming out uh, and will also be available on the Switch as well, which is like the greatest thing ever. And so since it'll be out on the Switch, you can practice it on the go. Yeah, so it's like a Roman cancel, like someone in the chat is saying basically down there. But having grid gives you a lot of power. You get a lot of extra ability. You get a damage boost as well. Oh, shout outs to the sub. I didn't see who the sub was. There he goes. Origami Kingdom, thank you for the subscription. Much appreciated, much appreciated. But, so now this person's glowing. They have access to the chain shift, which is kind of like, think of like a Roman cancel mixed with um, Killer Instinct's instinct activation. Because you can use it as a preview. You can do it like in the middle of block strings and it'll come out. And But you have to be careful with that. But I don't want to get into too much explanation. But you can use it when you wake up. And then you'll flash and freeze the screen. See if the enemy's in the middle of something. You get a free uppercut kind of that way. You know, you can use that as a preview. You can use it to Roman cancel your moves and do a lot more damage, etc, etc. So basically, to build this meter, you just need to keep moving forward. Uh, you need to keep uh, basically attacking. If you back off, you lose a little bit of that meter. If you use your force function, you lose a lot of meter. If you block a lot, you build it. It's a very complex tug of war for the grid meter. But winning the grid war, winning that grid cycle gives you a lot of power. It's an interesting mechanic because the way it's designed, for example, you got Batista who can zone you and just zone you all day. But if you use your uh, perfect blocking, if you use the little shield block intelligently as you're zoning, you build up a ton of grid by blocking intelligently, which means then the Batista is going to zone you and then you're going to get win the grid cycle and you can use that to get in on them, which will make the opponent, the Batista, be like, shoot, I can't keep zoning because he's going to win grid. And now maybe the Batista player will try to do something different or maybe they'll play with the, 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 the disadvantage of not having won the grid cycle, etc., etc. It's 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 really well designed. I really, really, really like it. I really, really like it. So, uh, yeah. Oh, for those people who don't know what a Roman cancel is, yeah. <laughs> Roman cancel is basically canceling yourself into neutral, which is the, the power in Guilty Gear. So you can cancel moves into your back to neutral right away. So you can basically kill the delay of any move to extend combos, to prevent you from getting whiff punished. This is super basic explanation because in Guilty Gear there's such thing as purple Roman cancels, yellow Roman cancels, and red Roman cancels. And I don't want to get into that right now. <laughs> Just understand that Roman cancel puts you into neutral, so does chain shift. Chain shift basically does the, does the same thing, so. Uh, I've never done a Skullgirls night, Diamond, because I actually don't know Skullgirls very well. So, um, 
Yeah, no problem. I mean, this is that, that's the fun part about this, about watching all these different games here. And then also another thing too, is that you'll have to remember about this game is there is the ability to reverse beat. So uh, as long as you haven't used a button in the middle of your chain combo, you can actually uh, go backwards. So I can do B, C, A. I can do A, B, C. I can do A, C, B. As long as I haven't used it, I can go in any direction. So a lot of times people will use medium, heavy, light. Watch this right about here. See there? You see her whiff that light punch right there? That was basically to cover the recovery and the bad frame data of the heavy into a whiff light so she can keep the pressure. You have to read where these gaps are coming in and that way, and that way you can take advantage of those gaps and challenge them. A lot of times it's hard to know where the gaps are coming from also because I've simplified it to A, B, C, but that's standing and crouching, so you have six buttons that you can mix between them, right? So you can do standing A, crouching A, standing B, crouching C, standing C, crouching B. Like technically, if you can stay within the range, you could do all six of them in any order, and so there's a lot of mix-ups in that kind of situation here in this game like that, so. So right there, you saw Wagner charge up her sword. So now she has uh, the ability to do crazy dashing things all over the place. And so there you go, Red Blade taking the first round. And he's in the winner's side too. So Clear Lamp from Japan has been winning a lot of events. Climax of Night. He won the first, I'm pretty sure Clear Lamp won the first Climax of Night. I don't remember if he won the second, or did he lose that one? Did he get second place in Climax of Night? I can't remember now. But Clear Lamp is one of the best Eunice players from Japan, and he's traveled to all these events, and his Byakuya is super sick. And so here we go. Byakuya has these ways to knock you down after the long combo. So, oh, yeah. See, the super puts you in a web, and you get locked there. After you get locked by the web, you can keep the combo going, but what most Byakuyas do is because they put it so late in the combo and the damage scaling is so high, they use it to set up a bunch of webs and now here comes the mix-up, basically. Also, another thing, if you tech a throw, you are plus on block. And so again, I just really love the balance of the mechanics. It's, it's not hard to tech a throw and if you do, you're rewarded because you're plus on block the opponent has to respect your buttons all of a sudden. But that's because the offense is so potent, you deserve to be rewarded for teching a throw. And I love that. I love that. Mmm, just caught him low. And you only get one jump cancel per combo. So the combos do get kind of limit. You have to know how to maximize your combo without using jump cancels. So a lot of those are special moves that just take them into the air naturally and stuff. But here we go. Okay, activates Veil Off. That's another thing you can do. I never exactly remember what Veil Off does. It d definitely, uh, if you do it raw outside of a combo, you break the opponent's grid. But uh, <laughs> Veil Off is always the one that confuses me the most. Oh, then goes for the super super that costs all of your meter. Oh, hitting them with a veil off removes their vorpal. Yeah, Wagner is considered very unga bunga. She is the character in this game that might be the closest thing you'll get to like a Rashid from Street Fighter V who's just like a lot of people think is really oppressive kind of character. She's very, very, very good. I see. So if you hit them with it, then you remove their ability to chain shift. You take their Vorpal away. If you hit them with it raw, you can activate it raw and hold it, and then it's just invincible until you let go. But um, if you do that, then you actually break their grid. When you break somebody's grid, they obviously cannot gain grid. They will not be able to win that chain cycle. Their grid meter will come back after the chain cycle, but it's a guaranteed for them to lose. And they can't do a bunch of things like key moves, like assault and stuff like that. Anything that requires the D button, they cannot do once they're warp. <laughs> It's just sitting there waiting. He's like, when can I move? When can I? Oh, whoa, mistiming from Clear Lamp. Yeah, and again, somebody asked me one time, what is my favorite fighting game in terms of mechanics? 
overall? Like, what is the most intelligently, smartly designed game fighting game mechanics? And my answer was Unist. I really, really honestly think Unist has the best balance with the grid system, the Vorpal, the Chain Shift, the Veil Off. As confusing it can be, as it can be, the way it's all balanced to reward you the right way in every situation is really, really good. Dude, Uniclear being on the Nintendo Switch is going to be the greatest thing in the world. I'm so looking forward to that. There it is, the X? Okay, your response. Yep. And right there, there was the chain shift, right? Wake up. So found the opportunity to chain shift. He saw that Wagner is about to do an attack, so he just immediately activates a super and kills her. So that's the advantage of having a chain shift right there. Not only do you get to use it to extend your combos, but you can use it as a preview system to see what your opponent is doing and reacting properly to that. I have not seen Metal Revolution yet. I have not messed with that game at all. Is that the game that Tatsu's been tweeting on? See, right there. Anytime Wagner wants to, she can spend meter and be plus. Right there. Plus on block. So anytime she has meters, she can activate that. She's plus on block. She can keep her pressure going. And it charges up her shield and her sword. So the, the, the power-ups that she gets for those things uh, still apply. And so Wagner can basically kind of stay in your face as long as she has meter all day. So here we go. Planting webs. What's the mix-up? Ooh, good blocks. Patience. That's an overhead, by the way. Doesn't look like an overhead, but it is an overhead. Okay, set up again. Oh, just waits and baits out an uppercut. Okay, there you go. You can use the alpha counter, like guard cancel, to get him off of you. I completely forgot there were alpha counters in this game. <laughs> completely forgot. Do I have a favorite Unga character? I've always really liked Leo, but <laughs> uh, from Guilty Gear, but because uh, he's just such a cool counts concept for a character. But I know so many people hate that character so much, including me when I fight him. But I've always wanted to learn him because he's just so stylish and cool. Oh yeah, so if you, you have the ability to activate shields. Do you see the shield here? Do you see that little glow in front of Byakuya right there? You can see this little glow in front of him. You have the ability to activate these shields and basically it's kind of, you know, helps you def like I can't remember the exact details of it but it, like it creates further pushback although your block stun is a little bit longer but it's basically a way to try to help you get yourself away from the opponent the problem is you still have to obey high or low oh that's what gives you the more grid that's right so you get more grid but the problem is if you block the incorrect way and here's an overhead from Wagner What happens now is that your grid breaks. So if you get thrown out of shield or block in the cor incorrect direction when you're shielding like that, your grid breaks and it'll look like uh, the grid is going. Yeah, now you'll see it just looks shattered. Now the grid is shattered over here and you can't win the, the, the grid cycle at all. So then your grid broken at this point in time. So that is uh, not good. <laughs> that is a not good situation to happen like that. So there you go. Oops, wrong window. Oh, grid uh -oh. broken up in the overhead. Okay, here we go. This is it for Red Blade. And look, so basically he's kind of lost a lot of, oh, he's going to veil off. And you saw right there, if you land the veil off in the raw situation, if you land a veil off in a raw situation, this was not in a combo. This was just activating the veil off here. 
right here. Just a raw veil off here. If you land the raw veil off, you see all of a sudden now his grid gets fixed, but a raw veil off also breaks the opponent's grid. So even though his grid was broken, he lands this raw veil off, which has invincibility until this explosion, and then turns the tides. Turns the tides, basically. Not anymore with the veil off. Yeah. Hold back dash dash C. Oh, takes his turn back with 5A. And now, yeah, and look, you can even build so much grid that you jump into the opponent's side of the meter. <laughs> oh, wow, just uses the chain shift, and all of that grid gets converted into super meter. So you'll see how, like, uh, basically when you activate the grid here, see he has no super meter here. As soon as he activates the chain shift, all this drains, this pipe turns blue because it's pumping all the super meter into there. And now he gets all this free super meter from that as well. So that's another benefit of activating chain shift early. Yes, if Veloff gets blocked, you are punishable. Very, very punishable. So it is a risk. So uh, I probably didn't mention that. So uh, Veloff is very punishable on block. So you can get killed for doing that. So. Really? Japan has her mid tier, huh? Interesting. I always thought that uh, Wagner was just considered like super OP in this game. So who does Japan have at the top? Do they have like Phonon up there and Byakuya up there and stuff like that? Or is it just Clear Lamp is amazing? Seth, Batista, and Yuzu. Okay, okay, got you. Not even phone on anymore, huh? Not even phone on. Plus on block. Nice. That's the assault right there. That little mini jump. That little short hop is the assault. If your grid is broken, you don't have ac access to it. That was actually a really good job by Clearlamp finding the gap in the pressure from Red Blade. And there you go, 2 1 for Clearlamp. No, uh, JGP. I just uh, asked people early on, and I've got a list of like seven matches, and I'm just throwing them up here as we go. So I just, whatever people were saying, I've just been throwing up here. So. Oh, the stagger. See right there, Clear Lamp, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Red Blade tried to interrupt in the middle of that string, expecting a reverse beat or a stagger, but instead it was just a delayed chain and frame trapped Red Blade instead. So here we go, planting all the webs. What's the mix up? You can throw before the webs trigger. Oh, reverse the 6B. Okay, here we go. He's going to put him all the way back to the other corner. Gotta be careful about this CS though. Oh no, not anymore. No, oh, the buttons. He went to Nanase, huh? Yeah, I heard Nanase is really good in this version, which is kind of makes me sad why I didn't play this, because that was who my character was, Nanase. So this was the right time, because I played her in Uniel, and she sucked in Uniel. And so she got so much better in Unist, and I didn't play Unist. I mean, how sad is that? Hopefully she's still good in Uniclair. Ooh, what? Oh, TRS. Uh, wow, it goes right through the web. Doesn't want to deal with that. There, you saw the reverse beat in the 2A. Oh, didn't activate the super. I thought she was going to do that into the super, but I think so did Clear Lamp, which is why he didn't really take advantage of it. There you go. Mika, huh? Interesting. Oh, my goodness. He's round star Gambit. Oh, he tried to website again and jump to C. That didn't work out, but okay, here's the buff. Try to Ooh, get nice. Call that by Dash C. Yes, from Clear Lamb. Uh oh. And now we're back to this corner. Not looking good. He also has Warpal again. I missed Uniel. I still remember at one of the runbacks, I actually got second place at, at Super Arcade. I got destroyed by uh, Breaker Dave, but I was really proud of myself. I played really well that week. Alright, Zotek. Wow, he takes his turn back with 5A. 
Oh, nice! The chain shift in the gap! Overhead! Okay, so yeah, you heard them say he has Vorpal, so he comboed into the Veil off to get rid of the Vorpal, but... It, it was a good idea, but didn't work out for him, so... And Nanase is a... The reason why I picked her is because she's a very straightforward character. She's a very, very straightforward character. Was that the reset? I think that was, wasn't it? Yep, that was the reset right there. Yeah, you see how lenient the tech window is. It's a pretty big tech window, and you really have to uh, honor the the person who teched. Oh, that was kind of interesting. Nice. Oh boy, here we go again. The setups. Low. There's one up there. There's still that one in the middle right there. But it went away. The throw tech counts as a hit, I think, so it makes the webs go away. Uh, grapplers definitely exist in this game. Um, Waldstein is in this game, and Waldstein is terrifying. He was super good in Uniel. I don't know how good he is in Unist, but in Uniel, he was one of the top three characters, if I'm not mistaken. He's like a grappler with dulcim limbs, basically. Oh god, look at the time! Wow! Did he find the gap in there? That is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's very KOF and Guilty Gear-like that there's a lot of people with command throws that are obviously very good, but uh, Waldstein is the most traditional grappler of the characters, and he is very good. That was an overhead, which looks almost exactly the same as his not overhead 2C. But the thing about it is you have to look for the spark. Like, look at the spark that comes out of this move right here. Right there. You see that spark? If you see that spark, then you know it becomes an overhead. And that's your that's your cue to stand up. There's a lot of that, too. Hilda has that as well. Ooh, see, there was the reverse beat, but Clear Lamp called it out. Except unlike Rugal's run throw, which is a hit, Waldstein's is actually a throw, right? If you're just blocked, you get hit by it. And see, that one wasn't the overhead. You see that? They look exactly the same. That was not the overhead. They look so similar, but there was no spark. So that's why Clear Lamp knew not to stand up. I'm sorry, uh, Red Blade saw that. Oof, this pressure. Oh, God, he just found the gap again. Nice. 
Good block on the assault. You can only do one jump attack on the assault. Oh, you see the preview window on that? It's just so nice. Oh, the win! He shimmied him! He shimmy. Street Fighter shimmied him! <laughs> oh my god! Guilty Gear character variety with more of a KOF movement. Yeah, so the reason why you want to call it KOF movement, the assaults are like the short hop, but the other thing too is the game doesn't have high jumps. This game is, does not play vertically. It's a very horizontal game. And that's one of the important things about this game. You can see it's not about going into the air and doing all these crazy things. Nobody really has crazy instant air dashes. It's really jumping and assaulting that you can do in this game. But it's very different than air dashing. Oh god, the double assault. Yeah, and see, that's why you want to win grid, because chain shift is just such a scary tool. It's such a potent tool to have, and you get extra damage. And not only that, I mentioned earlier that you have these things called force functions, but uh, your force functions get, like, they use less or they get buffed. And then uh, you also get a passive buff or something like that. Like some characters, when they win Vorpal, they just gain an extra little power-up or something like that, which was added to Unist over Uniel, I believe, and stuff. So there's a lot of things that you get benefits. Wow, the patience! What? He went under him on wake up? Check this out. He dashed forward to get to the other side. What a cheeky... Oh my god. Seth is number one for reasons. Breaks the rules. Uh, okay. Yeah, Seth is basically the mix-up monster. And the thing about it is, even though he has lower health, he still has more health than he did in Uniel. He actually got a health boost. In Uniel, he died really fast, and, you know, maybe they should have left him that way. Dash block OS. Ah, gotcha. 50 rings. Yeah, in this game, you can dash by hitting A plus B, and then... Uh, you can hold down back right afterwards or back right afterwards and your character will keep dashing but if anyone sticks a button into them you'll automatically block basically oh Yep, plus keep the offense going. Reverse beat to get the throw. Oh no! He was like, I am the chip! Oh, never mind. Never mind. At least it was in between games that he had a Woshige moment. Oh my god, you see him just... That's like that Tekken where you see someone just wave dashing in front of somebody else's face, dude. Just the respect that they're giving each other. Let's see if this makes Red Blade mad. God, again, just running in his face. Oh, the stagger. Oh, what are you standing up for? What are you standing up for? It's tough because your brain is like, I won, I won. Oh, shoot, now I got to come back in here? Here we go, set, set. Not a good look. 
Oh, yep, yeah, you get that throw in there. Here we go. He'll most likely either strip Warpole put him all the way to the corner. There yep. it is. Yep. Got a lot of meter now. It's, it's Wagner's turn. Jeez! Oh, it's still Wagner's turn. Oh! Oh! 6B! This is gonna hurt so much, he's a bail off. He's just gonna cash out. Yeah, no. Oh! He, he wants to try kill off of his PO. Oh, there it is. He's gonna be able to do it right here. He's got... When you have the veil off, as long as you have the veil off activated, you can activate your super super, if I'm not mistaken. You can always just use your super super, as long as you have the veil off going. But that requires you to hit it. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken on that one. <laughs> now clearly I was like, damn it. Oh dang, okay. Give himself a little bit more time. Yeah, Yuzu is really good, but she's hard to use. She's easier to use in this one than she was in Uniel, but she's still hard to use, especially compared to like BB Tag. The empty assault into the second assault. Everyone knows Nanase has the best theme. Whoa, the wake up buttons this time finally. Oh yeah, you can combo in the throws. You can combo in the throws. You have a bigger window to break them that way. But um, you still have to have the reaction to it. The date for Combo Breaker was announced, I think, but they, the venue was not announced yet, if I'm not mistaken. Oh my God, he's trying to walk up overhead. Still, Wagner's turn here. Got meter. We might keep going. Oh, no shield bash. Doesn't use anything. Red Blade, can he find a hit? Oh, that's a Jeez. No, I think. But look at the grid. You see, oh, look, watch. Look where the grid starts here. Look where the grid starts in the start of the sequence. You can see he has none meter here, but as he keeps blocking and shielding these blocks, oh, he's not even shielding the blocks. He's just blocking them. But look how much meter you gain for smart blocking. Look how much grid he gained for that. So he's rewarded for defense. So this is like, again, with the grid system, it's one of the only games that you get rewarded for blocking intelligently, for blocking well. You actually win the, vo the, the grid cycle, so you're rewarded for blocking. So you can actually feel good about blocking and being very defensive. Oh my god! It's not over! He wins Warp Bowl! He's either gonna get the punish! Alright, he gets one more chance here. Is he gonna spend meter? No. no. Meter list, knocked out, one more hit though. Can Clear Lamp hold out or. Mm, nice tech! Oh, and the delay! Delay. delay. He's gonna put him back into the corner. He actually gets one more setup. Here we, right, go. Here we go. Mix up for the tournament. Oh my god, that was just like the Rickster Super! This is just like the Rickster Super! He just does it! You need 200 meter to do it. You need a full bar to do that. I think it's called Infinite Worth, and he just does it. Like this. Raw Infinite Worth. This could be it here. 14 seconds, he blocks the overhead. Death oh! goes for it! Grand Blade! He gets the high wax! Alright, but he has no meter going into the next round. We take that. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, all these resources here. 
It's weird because MK11, the characters all have such different weapons, but I know what you mean by the character variety is kind of low in there. Oh, God, that's so good. Most characters can't combo after throws in this game. I think only a few can, but having the web to allow you to combo off of the throw is so nice. What the hell was that? God, and then the counter poke. Is that enough? Is this going to kill? Is this going to kill? Yeah, he's got the infinite worth available to himself. Woo! And you can see the enthusiasm from this man. Oh, poor Red Blade. The largest Undernight Ember tournament to date here yes. at Combo Breaker yes. 2019. That, what a victory. That was, that was a hard fought grand finals. Oh, man. Oh, poor guy. You can... Dude, the heartbreak of fighting games, man. The heartbreak of fighting games is brutal. Oh, man. <clears throat> oh, man. Okay. Uh, I'll do... I'm going to do more. I'm going to do more. But before I do that, I'm going to run some ads because I told myself I was going to be better about running some ads. So we're going to do that real quick, guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And uh, stick around, stick around. If you guys are enjoying this content, would like to subscribe. And I forgot to turn on my stream labels so that uh, the people who have been subscribing the latest have not been getting their names updated at the bottom. But I will, I definitely want to give a thanks to all the people who have resubscribed here. Uh, Peter0611 has resubscribed. Uh, let's see here. Uh, James the Powerhead, Sus Lady Killers, uh, Tap Two GG, Drunken Banana, all have resubscribed, and uh, Origami Kingdom is a brand new subscriber, so thank you to Origami Kingdom as well. If you guys are enjoying the content and would like to support, um, you know there's always that option, and I would appreciate it greatly. Uh, for the subscriptions and stuff like that. And you get cat emotes, just like uh, Nutacon is saying. Uh, where is Jasmine? She's staring at me, and she wants food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come here, Jasmine. I'm tapping my lap. This is what I do. There we go. There we go. Hi. Oh, poor kitty. And now Nathan's wandering by because he's like, I hear meowing. That usually means food. That usually means food. It's too early for dinner. It's too early for dinner. We have like another hour and a half to go. Aw, poor kitty. You don't like being held. Jasmine doesn't like being held. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. Last time I did this, I think she stabbed me in the lip with her claw. So I'll let her go. I'll let her go. All right. Let's see. What other match do we want to see here? Let's do this. Let's do a search for... Uh... Oh, there we go. And... God, these matches are all so long because these are all like, uh, these are all, um, <clears throat> what do you call them? Uh, these are all grand finals, but they're all so good. So it's totally worth it. So this is a uh, Hotashi versus Teresa uh, grand finals of CEO Taku. So let's go ahead and change this here. Guilty Gear, Exert, Rev 2, um, Teresa versus Hotashi, 
CE Otaku Grand Finals. Boom, there you go. Let's go ahead and watch this. I mean, how familiar... Uh, <laughs> thank you, Andres. How, how familiar are people with... It's just going to be five more seconds of Kai's abs. No one get happy. No commentary on this? I just want to see May in that... In that Can you guys hear any commentary, or is it just really quiet? It's like actual gameplay of May, and everyone's going to be like, all right, go home. You're happy. Now come back for... Enthusiasm, that just pure love for the game. You can hear commentary. Did I have this on? I guess I did have this on the whole time. So, okay. I didn't realize. Yeah, I did. Okay, okay, okay. Let me turn the volume down a little bit. <clears throat> All right, looks like they're ready. There we go. Breathing as intensely as he can with his eyes closed. Makes it, makes it I didn't have it playing through my speakers. Here we go. So, Teresa is a player from Japan who uses uh, Jam and is one of the players that wears his heart on his sleeve more than any other player that I've ever seen. Hotashi is a is one of the top Elfelt players in U.S. And then just run it back again yeah, yeah. and then just do it again. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't like to overthink my opponent, though. I just, you know, make them show you the next level. Yeah, Keep running go. what you're running yeah. until they... Elfelto. These intros are so beautiful, and the crazy thing is they're so good at them now. Like when you watch Grand Blue Fantasy, it's so crazy how much better they've gotten at this. Guilty Gear 2020 is going to be so crazy. How much do people want me to explain Guilty Gear? Like, are there a lot of people out there who don't understand how Guilty Gear works or anything like that? Jam is a very up-close character who wants to build seals. She charges up uh, seals. Uh, you'll see they used to be cards, now they're seals. And uh, she can charge up her three special moves, which she can kind of wrecka into each other, as long as she doesn't do the same one twice. She can uh, build those up to have higher levels, so when she has higher levels, they she can do longer combos off of them, they cause longer hit stuns, etc., etc. Uh, Elfelt is a character who attacks you with guns and roses, and she has a strawberry grenade, which is very, very annoying, that blows up... What are you knocking down, kitty? What are you doing? Happy New Year, Hideo Kojima. <laughs> and uh, she's very terrifying when she busts out her shotgun loops in the corner and stuff. And uh, outside of that, is very oppressive, has great range on her bouquet attacks and uh, her close S, which is a popping open a bottle of champagne, which is very, very powerful as well. So... Oh, she's got a standing low that's plus on block. Her standing kick is a low hit that is plus on block. So Jam wants to stay in on you and rush you down and destroy you, whereas Elfelt wants to knock you down, set you up for some sort, of, some kinds of unblockable setups uh, with the pine bomb and just be very oppressive overall. So here we go. Mm. Ryan Hunter. So there's the pine bomb right there. You'll see a timer in the corner of Elfeld's screen on when that thing's going to blow. But yeah, see, this is the power of the shotgun, dude. The shotgun is so good. She can't walk. She can't really block and stuff like that when she's in the shotgun. But the stance is still so powerful that it's usually not terrible to go into it at all. And look at that first round for Hotashi. It's just so quick. You saw a lot of just defends from Hotashi there. It's very necessary. So just defending is, you know, what you've heard it is, is blocking at the last second. But the thing about Guilty Gear is that blocking at the last second is very necessary because in old fighting games... <laughs> In fighting games of the past, which is, this is not the case at all anymore, for a lot of old fighting games, hit stun and block stun were almost always the exact same thing. There was very, very few differences between them. Like in Third Strike, it's consistently that like heavies are 
like uh, like two frames longer on blocks than no, on hit than block or something like that, and then mediums are one, etc., etc. But for the most part, more game most games had the same hit stun and block stun uh, uh, whenever you connected, right? And so in Street Fighter, a lot of that in Mortal Kombat and in Tekken, it's very largely based on the fact that on block you have worse fr uh, frame data than when you are on hit. Well, Guilty Gear, you can do that. You just have to just defend. So you have to just defend everything. Just defend, just defend, just defend, just defend, just defend, just to be able to get that kind of situation, to get the more advantage situation. If you don't, you get locked down a lot longer, etc., etc. So, yeah, Teresa is super good in this game. Super, super, super good game. <laughs> Punching away the pine berry. Roman cancel, so we talked about that going straight to neutral. As you can see here, uh, Jam has a dive kick. Not very plus on hit, but that's why he cancels it and also not very ne necessarily uh, good on block, but cancels it into the Roman cancel so he can do another attack on the way down, so to give himself the advantage. Just defending cranks up your risk gauge, or does it make it so your risk gauge is better? I always thought it was the opposite. Shoot, I can't remember exactly. Yeah, there's so much to talk about in terms of defense in this game, which is another reason why this game is so good, because as oppressive as the offense can be in this game, the amount of defensive techniques that you have in this game are really strong. Right, it reduces pushback so the opponent stays in your face. It's just that the frame data is worse. Dude, I like that he did that. So, um, one of the funny things that Elfelt has is she also has sniper rifle stance. Right here. So she goes into sniper rifle stance. So you can see that she has the long range gun. Now she has a reticule on the screen that you actually move with the controller wherever you want to on the screen and you can shoot. So Teresa knows that she's stuck. You can't move when you're in the stance. You're stuck here. So Teresa goes for this dragon kick to try to get close and punish him. So he moves the reticule to follow Teresa and try to shoot Teresa when he lands. See, like this, and then lock her down and then get out of the stance so that she can get back. But Teresa was still able to get a hit in. Oh, there's that wine bottle, that close five, that close S. Everybody's six P towards punch is uh, almost everybody's six P is head invul. So most characters have an automatic anti-air button in six P. Uh, that's it, that's, but they all have startup. So uh, they're they're ways to to punish obvious jumps. There's no air blocking grounded moves in this game unless you use the green blocking to stay safe. There you saw uh, Teresa was charging up all the seals. Um, uh, hi, this thing. Oh, it's stuck on the volume. That's why it's all messed up. Okay. So here we go. Punches them over there. Uh, you'll notice under Jam's meter over here, like Jam right here, there's nothing here. But you see how when he charged it up, he gained a dragon seal over there. So you'll see he gains a dragon seal very briefly. Right there. So he's charging it up to multiple levels. That's why she spins her arms a couple of times. And that makes her next dragon kick more powerful, basically, like that. And so he just did it across the screen. Roman canceled it. And now you see how that caused the wall splat? Had he not charged up the dragon kick, that wouldn't have caused the wall splat. And then uh, he wouldn't have been able to take that uh, for free like that. So... But it was kind of similar. Like 
So there you go. So Teresa, game number one. You see Teresa's on winner side. Hotashi on loser side. Oh, did that? That was weird. Oh, God. Okay. This is the option select that you can have to uh, blow up. Uh, blow up Roman cancel. I mean, uh, bursts. So bursts in this game uh, are basically combo breakers. Oh, actually, that wasn't an option select. He just did it. He just read it. Dang. Okay. Okay. I thought I thought that was the option select, but he had a, he had a full meter right there, and he was in the middle of a move right here. How does the option select work basically? If you have like, as soon as they burst, you are allowed to yellow Roman cancel your attack because they're in the middle of something. Shout out to Unsung Hero for the 35 month subscription. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think that was just a read. I think he was just a read. He Roman canceled his move so he can block the burst and punish it, basically. I have not seen the official PlayStation 5 logo. Is it not good? So here we go. This wouldn't combo had he not charged up the kick earlier. So if you look back here... Uh, so he does this combo here. Charges. Oh, he gets a knockdown here. Yeah, like this. Cancels the sweep into that. So now her her jaguar kick basically. She gets like she has an eight on jaguar kick. But now that she's charged it up to a level one, if she hits and juggles with the eight on jaguar kick, it causes the opponent to float a little longer so that you can combo after it. So because he builds it up right here, then he's able to do this, bam, right there. So you see that the symbol has disappeared because he spent it on that Jaguar kick, but that causes the hard knockdown here and lets the super connect. So that's how jam works right there. Did they take out that option select? K K K K K K K K K. Easy conversion because the grenade too. Good pressure. Far slash. I wasn't aware that they actually took it out. I thought it was still there. Yeah, that's one of the toughest things about Elfelt is once she gets you into the corner and ah. Once she gets you into the corner and starts comboing you, you basically cannot burst any of her combos. It's like it's like automatically burst safe. Ad blockers? Why would I put up an ad blocker, man? I've got to support all the content out there, dude. Come on. Oh, how do you suggest matches, Gun Tanks? Uh, a bunch of people suggested matches early on, and I'm just kind of going through the ones that uh, I just feel like inter I'm interested in, and I'm trying to make sure I have a good variety of the matches. Oh, God, look at this elf felt loop here, and now you're stuck on this pine bomb. Oh, right under there and baits out the burst. And charges up mid combo. Oh my god! This is what I mean by uh, Teresa wears his heart on his sleeve, but check this out. He uses, so shotgun has the ability to roll in the middle of it. So when you activate the shotgun, uh, I think it's her punch button or the kick button makes her roll forward. 
And when she rolls forward, if she passes through, she turns around, goes right back in the shotgun stance, but he YRCs the roll into a shot. And then another shot and catches her. And this is what I mean by Teresa wears his heart on his sleeve. I mean, look at him. He's like the saddest teddy bear when he loses. I swear you feel so bad for him. If you have something for Soul Calibur gun tanks, that would be great. I would love to see a Soul Calibur match. Oh, nice. So normally that it's hard to combo off of that dive kick, which is an instant overhead. But if you've got a YRC, then yeah, it, then then the uh, I'm sorry, an, a, a regular Roman cancel, an RRC, a red Roman cancel like that. It's very easy to combo off of. So you have to be careful when J see when she doesn't have the meter. You see how when it, even though it hit multiple times, and that's a blitz shield right there. Blitzes allow you to. Oh, that was so sick. That was such a sick sequence right there. Oh god, this YouTube is... See, that's the blitz, gets rejected, combos him off of this, throws that out there, combos into the... Gr like this, she tries to get away. The grenade is still there, so he rolls away. The grenade blows her up, and he's able to keep the combo still going, dude. That was sick. Oh my god. 6-H just to chase it. I mean, like Ryan Hunter said, that might have just been a throw attempt. But yeah, you don't want to get counter hit by that button. Oh! Yeah, the Roman... I'm sorry, the, the Alpha counter did not work at all because Elfelt is always at such a safe range with this gun. Yep, see, not a lot of hits done on that. Oh, nice. And air throws are super good in Guilty Gear, by the way. Super, super good. Oh, oh my god, he went for the blitz? God, this is what Elfelt does. Oh, no, she still has the bomb, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hotashi's like, stuff happened. It worked. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, man. Nice. Ooh. Just missed with the Jaguar kick. Yeah, the shotgun stance is so good. Oh, and then baits out the burst. Throws the bomb, sets up the unblockable. So when you go into the sniper stance, if you don't move the reticule, it shrinks. And when it gets to the, the, the full small size, it becomes unblockable. So there are setups where you throw the grenade... They get up into it and block the grenade, and then the explosion happens, and they get stuck in block, and then you just move the sniper rifle reticule on them, and then it gets to the unblockable setup. And so basically, you can force them to take a hit in that situation. So right here, toss the grenade. And what, see the reticule shrinking, and uh, Teresa just takes the hit to try to get away. So if you block the grenade, I think you're kind of stuck. So he just takes the hit to try to throw off the timing. But uh, Hotashi responds properly by shooting her right away. And getting the extra combo because it combos off of the pine berry as well. See, so watch. So boom, throws this, shoots, boom, explosion gets another shot. There we go. Oh, nice. Oof. 
Oh man, this is not looking good for Teresa at all. Yeah, you gotta block that Pineberry. Nice throw. Oh, couldn't get that combo to go. Wow. You used to not be able to hit the Pineberry back at Elfelt, which was so annoying to deal with, but now you... Oh, yeah. Had no choice. You had to burst there. There you go. Otashi with the reset, and this is... God, look at the anguish on Teresa, dude. Like, like I said, I don't know how you beat this guy. I don't know how you beat this guy without feeling awful about it. Teresa doesn't want that water. He's like, I don't want your damn water. I want to win. Oh, there we go. Dang, look at this. <laughs> Jesus. Normally I would skip through this part, but just watching Teresa in anguish is just so hard, dude. Dude, it's a stressful environment, man. And the funny thing is that Hotashi is kind of a... You know, he's a really cool guy. He's a really nice guy. But he does have the ability to be cocky and to show off. So, And, and he's being really restrained, in my opinion. Can't see my screen, Jasmine. Oh, no! What did you do, Jasmine? Oh, no, this is just another ad that they had to run. I really like the build. It's got hand grips on the side. It's sh it's more ads. Right. Come on, kitty. Ow! He was just sitting there. Go ahead, pull the grenade. I want you to pull the grenade. Go ahead, go ahead. What a blitz! Yeah. But that was really kind of a minor punish right there. Cali burst, dude. Cali burst. Yeah, because the burst rises up and then explodes, if you can do combos that you are lower than the opponent significantly, you can always avoid the burst. And then when it comes down, it's completely punishable. Like, that's all burst safe right there. Throws are one frame in this game. There's that low, that standing 5k that we were talking about earlier. Nice. Dude, you don't understand, dude. Teresa, like, I, he's one of the players that I could never play in a tournament because I would just feel so bad if I was ever winning. Like, I, I can't do it. Like, whenever I played matches back in the days and f their friends were watching and cheering them on, it was hard for me to play really hard because I just didn't want to beat the person in front of their friends. I wanted their friends to be happy. I wanted their friends to be like, yay! You know, so, like, I couldn't take people down as well. It's a stupid thing. Oof. Faded out the blitz. Got him to use the burst. Shotgun. Oh my god, just do it! Ryujin is the dragon kick, basically. Ryu, of course, means dragon. Oh, nice. I know Jin can... Oh, he, wow, he took that round? 
Dang. Dang, okay, okay. Nice block on that overhead. Oh, rolls to the other side! So the grenade, that was the left-right mix-up right there. That's, a, that's an unblockable. That's basically a throw in the shotgun stance. So here we go. Unblockable setup. Yep, there it was. And he even um, uses the Roman cancel there to... Oh, God. You Roman cancel and, th and the time slows down for the opponent. So he Roman cancels, goes into the sniper rifle, and then that way he has time to, to let the reticule shrink to become the unblockable while the opponent is stuck in slow motion, dude. It's crazy. So good. Nice conversion. But he drops it, yep. Yeah. Oh no! Okay, that first I gotta call out because he did like four two Ks. It's clearly he's doing a burst safe route. No, man, he's, he's going to a reset. I, mean, I got I gotta burst. Oh, good back dash. <laughs> I guess he knows that he can back dash here, but I feel like the K Oh, the miss! Woo! <laughs> that was sick. The mobility. Out of there, yeah. So even though she can't block in shotgun stance, she's still so mobile and has so many options available to her that she's still so hard to lock down. That roll is invincible. The She's got an unblockable. The shotgun comes out so fast. So even though she's like super vulnerable in that stance, she's still terrifying to fight against. Ryujin, is that what that means? Jin as in like God, basically? I'm not 100% sure. Again rolls! Oh, the grenade is still there! He's gonna blow him up! Oh my god! What a conversion! And that's burst safe! Yo! What a conversion on that! That was sick! Uh, look at this. So shotgun, pow, bo the bomb blows up, and he's like, oh, I'm in shotgun stance, let me do my uh, running uppercut attack, and then combo, and then I've got my uh, Roman cancel to extend it, dude, that's so sick. God, that was so good. And this is what I mean by I love the way this game plays. Because the Roman cancel gives you so much freedom, the ability to convert hits into combos, I swear half the time people are doing this the very first time. That's like the first time they've ever done the combo. But they just know their character so well that it just flows. They're like, this should work. This should work. And when you're one with your character, like Omito is with Johnny and stuff like that, oh, it's so good, dude. It's so good. Oh. And you keep so much of your momentum when you uh, Roman cancel like that. Right. You see that when he did the, the what, what he does is, was it the air dash or was it the Ryujin that he does? I think he does the Ryujin, Roman cancels it, red Roman cancels it, and then he keeps the uh, momentum off of that Ryujin. Okay, burst him across the screen. See, he's in the air now. And so what he decides to do here, God, this YouTube loading is so slow right now. But it's also probably because I'm streaming at the same time on this computer. Yeah, look at this. Every time I try to advance a frame, it takes forever. Yeah, see, Ryujin, YRC, and then he keeps the momentum right under the Pineberry. 
and is able to keep the punish going, dude. That's so crazy. Uh, is there any character in Guilty Gear you ever wanted to try but never got to for time or difficulty? Hmm, that's a good, uh, probably Venom. Venom was always such a sick looking character that I really wanted to learn, but goodness gracious, I just was like, there's no way I'm going to learn this character, dude. Ooh, the overhead comboed into the Pineberry. Here we go, into the corner. Yep. God, an unblockable setup. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Jasmine is sitting in front of my monitor again, as she does. She knows where I'm looking, so she stands in front of there. Oh, nice! Whew. Use the burst. The oh, God. What the hell, side? I like the I like the early round burst here from Trace that he'll get his burst back now. All right, the staggers. Otashi super jumps out. Lost the staggers. Puffball, puffball. Oh, nice counter poke. And the anti air. Oh, no. That went to the other side, but he's going to get him into the bomb. Oh. Uh, um, I do have a waifu in Guilty Gear, Proud Soul. My waifu is Johnny. <laughs> I've told everybody my waifu is Johnny. I mean, if I had to have a waifu, it might be Biken, but Johnny is the waifu in this game. He did shotgun YRC, did it a little too soon, and yeah, the momentum, then Teresa was able to get advantage there. Teresa's mashing throw a lot, huh? Okay, okay. Final, final game here. This is exactly what we wanted to see after that really exciting... <laughs> That's a sad answer? Dude, Johnny is the best, dude. Johnny is amazing. Why do you think I like Yuzu so much? Because she's basically just a female Johnny, right? And that's why when um Karen, Karen G, did the Johnny crossplay, dude, I was just like, oh my god, this is the most amazing thing ever, dude. But Johnny's just sick, dude. He's just so cool. Nice IB on the second puff ball there from Otashi. He was able to poke out with the two key afterwards. Otashi forcing his way out of the corner with this shotgun. Why is that shotgun stand so scary even though she can't block? She's got anti-air options. She's got avoiding roll options. Oh, no. It is not okay. Look at the meter on Otashi's side. He has nothing to work with right now. He has to eat one more setup here. Let's see if Teresa busts up the trick. Oh, the oh. really big. Oh, you can see that as Matt. Oh, yeah, but the real no fear. No fear. And the wake up post last from Otaku. That's to extend the combo. Get the knockdown, spends the meter to Oh! Baited out the dead angle, got Teresa to spend the burst! It's not enough to kill! Nice conversion. Oh, nice. Gets the blitz. No! Bad burst! Hotashi in an extremely close set. 
and the crowd is champion, uh, chanting for their champion. Yo, everyone standing up. I, I don't think I've seen so many people get hyper Teresa. Teresa just basking. Uh, and there's Stephanie in the background taking photos, of course, where she always is, dude. Oh, man, good stuff. <laughs> Oh, uh, right? Dude, that guy is every emotion possible, I swear. It's so funny. Oh, man. Well, uh, I saw you posted up a uh, Soul Calibur match, but do you have anything from, like, a top eight of an event or anything like that? Or from, like, a, from like you know, because I'm trying to do, like, a, a review of 2019's, like, greatest matches kind of things like that. Less so of, like, trying to do a bunch of just, like, this this match here there and stuff like that not saying that the matches aren't good or anything like that i'm just really oh my god sailor moon you're really giving me a sailor moon match here everything in life is a negotiation when you cross the street is a negotiation getting your coffee at starbucks is a only five minutes you know what i've never watched a full sailor moon match i've never watched a full sailor moon match so let's do this we've got uh vicky viper vicky viper versus uh mr k mr k ceo taku this is top six it says <coughs> I just know that this game is Kusogi as Kusogi AF, which means it's super broken. Like you can command dash across the screen into an SPD instantly. There's like super easy infinites in this game, etc., etc. So uh, I know this game is basically just like the craziest thing ever. <laughs> super Nintendo game, baby. Super Nintendo. There you go. Can you do the... I see they're both using this character because I think she's the one that's super broken. Look at this. Command. Yeah, this is the infinite. <laughs> oh my god. Yep, fireball and then dash into SPD. Good god. How is this character fair? Way more explosive, you know, one hit and that's literally it for the round. Oh, good command grab on the guard can. Ouch! The damage on that. Mr. K is looking very okay right now. Now one match to one round to be. Yeah, this is like a fan-made game, but it's actually the way this fighting game works and also, in case people don't know, this is actually Arxis's first fighting game ever if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure this is their first fighting game ever. These matches will go fast. Yeah. Big damage. Oh my goodness. This is damage. Can't do anything about it except wait for the next round. Yeah. Somebody's gonna punch that guy. Yeah. You know, I already seen this movie, and I'm just gonna. Yep. This is why this is only five minutes long. She look at that dash into SPD. Oh no, he missed it. They both went for it. You scary, scary children. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Mr. K. Yeah, okay, Mr. K. Oh my goodness. Redefining it around. Ooh, use the fireball to keep her out. Oh, jeez. Oh no. Doesn't go into the infinite. Yeah, there's definitely a difference in kind of confirmation there. God, this is crazy. Wow! Block into SPD just like that? They are both like, I'm in the mood, I'm in the moment. Let's clap and get that hype up. They, they exceed us. And that's definitely These matches are so fast. Like, they love the competitive part of it. Like, I want you to do 
I want to do all it. Let's play the best that we can. Right. You know? Exactly. Oh, man. These are definitely two of the best when it comes to stand-up music. They both start out with sweep again this time. No. Okay. Not today. A little more conservative start this time. Mr. K being a little more cautious there. Jesus! Goes for the one-two into the grab. Can't get this time. Vicky trying to go into the curb. Yeah, it's real scary to check this, those dash forwards, man. Good God, that SPD is like one frame and like punishes everything. <laughs> oh man. Oh, there it is, Mr. K. The crowd loving it right now. So wait, is crouching light pun is that that teleport is like a dash cancel? It's like low jab, low jab into de canceled into teleport into low jab, low jab canceled into teleport. How do you do the teleport? What's the input for the teleport? Oh. Damn, that was nice. You actually, are you just actually, um, just low jab, low jab, link dash, low jab, low jab? That's crazy. So it's just low jab, low jab, manual dash, low jab, low jab, manual dash. Holy crap. Oh shoot, but I'm guessing there's no buffer, so it's just, you just have to time it perfectly. So there is a little bit of difficulty in it. God, why does that work? Oh my gosh. <laughs> nice, nice emote mod there, that's awesome. Hmm. Oh no! Oh, backs up this time, knowing that Mr. K really likes to go for that guard cancel. Gets one more for her troubles. And it's Jeez! Oh my god! Super excited! Oh my god! What a match here, dude! Oh my god! Uh, so gun tanks, uh, I know you talked about the Soul Calibur match, but is this like, I, I think I asked a little bit earlier, is that match like a, a, uh, like a top eight? Cause I'm kind of trying to do like a review of like some of the greatest matches from last year and stuff like that. It's not just like, Hey, I'm just watching random matches here and there. Like I'm trying to, 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 to see, I'm trying to see what's like considered some of the, the the best matches of the year and stuff like that oh no that one's too old that's too 2015 I know that match that match was amazing but that's 2015 it needs to be for 2019 basically <clears throat> that was a ki one yes that one was an amazing match uh, we can do Capcom uh, punk versus item but that would probably be the end of it there. I haven't done a Street Fighter match. It would be a fun one to analyze and take a look at. Um, unless anyone else has got some crazy uh, other crazy Street Fighter 5 match that they kind of remember. So we saw a Tekken one. We saw Marvel 3. Uh, we saw... Oops, I was doing this wrong all over the place. What am I doing here? Uh, what do I got here? We saw Guilty Gear Rev. We just saw Sailor Moon. Uh, we saw a Unist match. <clears throat> Knives versus Bane Hollow in a uh, MVCI. Alpha 3 match. <laughs> KOF 14. 
Sam show. Uh, which one do I have here? I have someone listed Kaz versus Justin Wong earlier. Soul Calibur. If anybody's got a good Soul Calibur match, I'm totally down to watch one. Uh, Bon Chan, Big Bird, Evo is another good one as well. Uh, let's see here. Or actually, uh, one of the matches that I did want to look at was, um, shoot, do I still have it here? Uh, where did it go? Uh, this is not it. This is not it. I had the match of, um, Which event was that, Gun Tanks? Which event is this? Let me give you some. Oops. Uh, this is. Uh, this is a, oh, is this kind of like a local, basically? This is just kind of a local one, right? Uh, which one's this one? Capcom Fighter. Oh, what's, what's that one, Gundam Jehudi Kai? Oh, God, okay, another Sailor Moon match. <laughs> uh i musician yeah he had some good matches as well i musician versus ak but uh i'm guessing like is there anything from like you know any of the major events for soul caliber or anything like that The scummiest thing you'll ever see, huh? Is it that crazy? It's one minute long. Oh my God. All right, all right. It's one minute long. All right, Jasmine, please move out of the way. Thank you. Wait, what is happening here? What is hap- Why is this character invincible all of a sudden? Why is this character invincible? Ba it's just backdash? He's just buffering backdash over and over and over again? <laughs> so wait, 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 wait a second. So, so, so why don't more people play that character? And that character is the worst character by far. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. That's so crazy. So, uh, was this a good match here that you got, uh, fat guy? Who was this b between? Everything in life is a negotiation. We've got... MT fine, Fighter versus Count Ravioli. Are these like two really, oh, you have no idea? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like I said, what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to find, you know, a bunch of matches that a lot of people feel like were like the best match of 2019 or one of the most memorable matches of 2019. So I'm, I'm trying to, I'm curious to see if there's anything like that. Like Knives versus Bane Hollow at Combo Breaker might be a good one in, in MVCI because uh, I remember a lot of the, the grand finals with Knives was amazing. 
Um, oh, Jesus Christ, Jasmine, please get uh, okay. Um, all Jasmine's doing is just walking in front of my my screen. Oh man, let's see here. Um, I only see uh, Tyson versus which event was it? Combo Breaker. <clears throat> Knives versus Bane Hollow. Here we go. Oh, this is an 11 minute video here. So let's take a look at this one here. Uh, God, see, this is what I mean. Is like when I see this, when I see this game, like even though it's technically colorful, it just looks washed out to me. I don't know what it. It's the, it's the, it's the movie filter, the cinematic filter that they tried to put in here. So it just, it doesn't look as bright and clean to me. Like I'm sad they tried to make the game look realistic as opposed to comic booky before. Yeah, that, that super from Winter Soldier is so good. Is that Tubaware on the chat right there? He's gonna have to box. Yeah, he absolutely had to. That's gonna be a punish. Go in the dark dimension. Yep. Get it out. And that's the other thing too, is like the gems were cool, but the backgrounds that they put for the gems are just like there's they're they're so like Photoshop filter or something like oh you're gonna get Dude, this game is so fun though. The, the, this game is crazy. I just love the the, 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 the the stuff that you're able to do in this game. Look at the I mean knives is push blocking perfectly and Chunty remains in his face because she can dash cancel anything on block. Oh that's a oh it was a happy birthday for a second. Either way, Winter Soldier is gone. But Sigma is right. bleeding right now. Knives have to be super careful bringing that guy in. Yeah, Knives almost has 150% worth of red health. Woohoo! Nice conversion! But it's not going to matter because he's got the two characters and the character advantage is just that great in this game. Yeah, it's really, really important. Oh, he's got a punch. He got him? He got him! Never mind for that character advantage. <laughs> Having a character disadvantage is, is huge. Bane Hollow takes that character. Great block. Oh, wow, no. So for those playing the home game, Power Stone is minus 7 on block. The problem is, though, is that with the pushback on it, most characters can't yeah, actually punish it with a jab. Have a seven frame attack that reaches that far. Sigma has Sigma. some five frame jabs, but he has huge jabs. Big old buttons. <laughs> Sigma has so yeah, huge jabs. To recognize that he blocked the power stone and punished Shomi on her way down. Jasmine wants food. And again, right away, Bane Hollow is bringing oh. in Winter Soldier. Huh. Knives didn't believe in the hit. Oh, no. God, Chun Li is crazy in this game, and she was pretty good in UMVC three as well. It's not like she was bad in that game. Oh, we're not going to see a counter switch here. Uh, Knives is rather uh, conservative with his meter at times. Oh my goodness, a block from Knives! Oh, oh and the conversion off of the Power Stone. I do, yeah. Actually, you're right. I forgot to update that. That is my bad. Uh, let's see here. Versus Capcom Infinite. Uh, let's see. This is Knives versus Bane Hollow. This is Combo Breaker Grand Finals. There we go. Uh, thank you for that reminder there. There we go. It dropped. Is that gonna be happy birthday? It, it is a happy birthday. Knives the happy birthday king. Second Yeah, exactly. Chun Li won the last MVC three tournament at Evo. Yeah, he's gonna try to keep both characters in there as long as possible. 
It looks for the chaotic flame. We're going to see rising fire. Oh! Do it again. Nobody gets out of there. It wasn't close enough for that power stone to connect. It's crazy. God, how do you block Chun? Dude, how do you even block that? That pressure is ridiculous. Whoa! We lost all that meter, though. He input it at the same time as the counter switch came out. Oh, thank you for the subscription back, Logathon. Five month streak. Oh, you joined the over 40 club. You're 41. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. You're in the same decade as me now. That's right. You can't push block against the power stone. Whew. Is it going to be another 3 0 butt that? It very well could be. And the thing is, is that <laughs> Bane's really. If Bane's doing the right things, he's just getting these crucial drops that are costing him characters, yeah, that are yeah, costing yeah. him momentum, costing him resources, even. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's not making bad choices. His pressure, when he gets the pressure, has been insane. Because, yeah, these crucial drops, little things going wrong, turning into big you, mistakes. Right. I'll be Will's AD at Frosty this year. So you'll be at Frosty's? Oh, cool. Okay, okay. Oh, you'll be Will's AD at Frosty. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Nice, nice. Dude, Knives is going on a rampage. Who's on the winner's side? Oh, this might not even be grand finals. I think this is just top eight. This might not even be grand finals. This is just top eight. Unless they go back against each other in Grand Finals. Oh, God, how do you block that? How do you block Chun-Li? That seems impossible. Yeah, the scaling in this game is brutal. Wow. Oh, that's got him? Yeah, got one of them. Great awareness from Knife to just dash up with Sigma and block. He knew the invincible reversal. Was wow. <laughs> and we got the Midwest chant going on right now. I hope you guys can hear that on stream. <laughs> <laughs> and Knife is backing off. Green got Sigma got the throw. This is looking real bad for Bane Hollow right now. I mean, he has three bars. He has Power Storm, but he only has Chun Li left. And he's got no oh, that should do it right there. One thing after another, he keeps building resources. He can actually chip him out. Yeah, he's nice going for the chip. Oh, he's yeah, got to be able to Oh, he got them both. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. That's gonna be, is that gonna be enough for both. <laughs> Not quite. Chip him out. Oh my god, how do you block that? That's impossible! How do you block that? Oh my god. Yeah, he would have popped the storm and then been able to punish the super from Chun Li, so Bane had to pressure naturally. That was ridiculous. He did have two bars, so he could have actually Kikoshoed if he if uh, possibly. But the, yeah, the problem is though is that chip scaling is existent in this game, so if the chip damage that he took from blocking in the air, that might have actually reduced the damage to the point where he could not sure, chip sure, it. Sure. Man, there's so much you have to be aware of. Right. One of the toughest things about this game is that because you have two characters, happy birthdays are brutal because those are the only two characters that you have. Yep, that's an infinite on assists, but... Definitely a huge momentum shift on Bane Hollow's side. 
Bang Bang Chief Keep O Block. Oh, just activate. Oh. I mean, that'll do it. That was awkward, but that'll do it. It's killing. Yeah, okay. Interesting. I don't know why that still counted as a combo going. Using the, the space uh, surge there to stay in the air a little bit. Ultimately, not going to matter. Chelsea's going to be able to finish off Sigma. And just like that, Bane Hollow has tied this up 2-2. Two two. Wow. Wow. And then all of a sudden, Bane Hollow turned it on. If anyone just took a water break to, you know, get some more water. Oh, yeah. I mean, this game was definitely not handled well. There's a lot of problems with it. It just doesn't look good. There's all these weaknesses clearly for the game, and it's just, it's sad because the game was super fun. I would have liked to see him go to the character select screen and just get a breather, but uh, I, I, I believe in knives, so. God, you just... Wow, he actually got just no up. way to survive against Chun. The mix-ups with this character are ridiculous. And pressure from Chun Li. Yep, the dash cancel. Oh, oh what? How do you even survive that? And he got a happy birthday out of it too. Oh, Chun Li got away. Yeah, using the archive to keep up pressure, but he backs off. That's gonna be a lockdown super though. Yep. He did get in the air. Oh, uh, get oh. Right now, and literally. He got opened up. Oh, he teleported behind that. I would have actually liked to just teleport in front and stay with that flame carpet still on screen. Nice push blocks to reflect the projectiles. Didn't have the meter, unfortunately, pick up off that happy birthday. Okay, regular oh, throw. <gasps> oh, missed the confirm. Oh, what? That's going to be dead Sigma. Uh, yeah, he's going to get the pick up here. Jesus! Dorado is sitting at 90%, so he, uh, this lockdown super isn't the worst. <laughs> Chun-Li just tossing him. Get off me. Alright, got Rose Garden on deck. Yeah, he's looking, he's looking for this opening right now. Trying to play patiently. Oh, what a power stone! That was ridiculous! And what do you know? Bane Hollow catches him. All stalking player there. Yo, can knives do anything at this moment? Boy, that comeback from Bane Hollow was... Oh, wait, never mind. That one comeback from Bane Hollow was everything, dude. That was ridiculous. Woo! Man, that was good stuff. Uh, Leroy is clearly OP, and if they nerf him, then follow the same pattern with their Ill, other DLC. Their sc I mean, it's um, it's very similar to what NRS used to do, right? Alien came out was overpowered, and then um, and then Predator came out was overpowered. I mean, the one time that didn't happen was Jason. Jason like never wasn't good when he first came out, right? Um. It's weird, because I, I just don't like Street Fighter Cross Tekken. That game was just, eh, I don't know. I don't like it, because the game was just so, like, throw it against the wall and hope something sticks kind of thing. I really didn't like it. Um, but let's see. We've got that one... Uh, Soul Calibur match over here. Let's see what we got over here. So Lit Mobile just sent me this solar wireless battery pack. I'm excited. Let's see what's inside. I really like the build. So this is oh blue god versus skill. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the MVCI was kind of a doomed product from the start, unfortunately. Unfortunately. God. Jasmine's just sitting here. She's just staring at me, dude. <laughs> She's literally just staring at me here. I, I, I don't know if I can show you guys this. 
Yeah, you guys can't see it. If I touch the camera, she thinks I'm gonna be feeding you guys. I'm, look, she's, she's just staring at me while I'm watching the stream over here. Uh, they did take it out. They did take it out of the uh, store for a while. But when MVCI came out, they brought it back uh, just to kind of add, to try to rehype it up a little bit. But then, um, uh, so it's been back since then. It's been back since then. <clears throat> but physical copies of UMVC3 and MVC3, yeah, they're pretty rare. Yeah. But this is cool because I didn't get a chance to see any of this World Invitational, so I'm kind of excited to see this here. Mitsurugi, huh? Skill using Mitsurugi versus as well. Oh, see you, see you later, Atomic Number. Here we go. As well, of course, is the character with... Uh, I forgot how it worked again. It was like all of his forward attacks were the sword, or was all of his A's were the sword, and all of his B's were the axe. And then uh, d he's in one mode or the other. Jesus, you're dead already. Okay. Thank you for the gift sub atomic number. I forget now. It was Aswell had to hit you with one of the swords and the shield and the... Or was it just which mode he was in? But he had the ability to power up so that he could cash it out into the... Um, like into the, the backbreaker, the backbreaker low. I forgot how he charged things up again. Oof. He, did he just have to hit you with, uh, oh my god, there's so many cats. <laughs> there's also Nathan, too. There are so many cats, oh my god. I didn't realize everybody did cats. Yeah, so the thing is, when Aswell is in one of the modes, when he's in axe mode, then all of his axe mo moves are faster. But then, um... <laughs> um so, but it, so all the sword moves have a little bit more startup, so you basically have to keep switching back and forth between them in smart situations. Mitsurugi is just a... Uh, just kind of a brawler character. Nothing really too fancy for Mitsurugi, if I'm not mistaken. Doesn't have any like crazy mechanics with him. It's been so long since I've played Soul Calibur, I can't even remember anymore. Oh, it's kind of sad. Nice. Oh, Mitsurugi has changed a lot, huh? Okay. So in season two, he changed a. Ow! He changed a bunch. Oh God! Reversal edge. Wow! He went for the sidestep. That's a that's a call out right there. Oh! Charge to get out of that situation. Same right back at you. Bring it back to neutral. Uh, nice. Is that a Bonic Plague that's doing commentary with Alicia? In season one, Aswell was like good, then he got nerfed, and then he was buffed again, right? So he's like... Is he still super good in season two? Okay. Adjusted as in good or or just normal now? Okay, still strong. That's good. That's what you want. You want the strong but not overpowered.
for this video. There we go. Here we go. 50 50 time. Okay, nice block on that. Wow, what a step! He got past the 6B, gets the full conversion right there, forcing him at the wall. And then again, disrespect right there from Gulad. He did not care after. Okay. Oh my God, the pressure out right now. So, Gun Tanks, if you can remind me, how do you get the Muscle Buster again? Because, like I said, I remember you had to, like, was it you had to hit him with both of them? Or was it just, um... Because I know, like, you had to put yourself into a special condition, and I just can't remember what it is. It's just, it's just a low in Axe Dance is all it is? But you, you, he had the, the, shoot, I forgot what it was called. Oh, no punish on the whip? Oh, my God, yeah, wow, he actually tried to use the whip punish normal on him, but he ended up getting punished on the startup of it. Wow, what a step Still, I have my notes somewhere for this game. Got him, round, uh, one round of peace right now, coming into the second game. All right, both of them have a matching meter to work with here. But Soul Charger, get away from me. Gone with the low. And now Jasmine is trying to be all cute. Oh wow, what a interrupt right there from Oh no. Oh good lord. Oh yeah. Get the combo off of the walls. Oh no. I think that's the second time that's happened. Huh. Yeah, you gotta be careful when Aswell's back to the wall, because I remember when he gets that muscle buster, he gets like the ridiculous combos. Why are you switching up, boy? Why are you switching up when I got meter? My love. What you doing over there? And then Soul Calibur's thing, nobody stares at the screen for explosions. Nobody looks at explosions. Oh, got it? Yes, there it is. Oh my god, skill. Bring that heat, but still staying alive. Wow, that wasn't enough to kill. Okay, there you go. Kind of an unwinnable situation there. It's just a really un uh just had to guess in that situation. It's always made me sad because this was a an event that I swear just didn't get the kind of uh publicity it deserved. Like the weekend that it happened, I didn't even know it was coming up. All right, Jasmine, out of the way, out of the way, Jasmine, out of the way, Jasmine. I don't even think necessarily it's that complicated, to be honest with you. All right, Jasmine, come on. Jasmine is so smart. She just likes to stand in front of any monitor that I'm staring at. She knows. Oh, there it is. But nice block right there. Full punish. In the clip situation, he got the grab. That was... I'm just glad that they kind of nerfed uh, Reversal Edge in Season 2. They said they got rid of the, uh, the, the, the charge if it's... Like, if you block it or something, if it's if it gets to the unblockable level, it doesn't actually trigger the, uh, the, 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 the RPS or something like that. I forgot how they changed it. I don't know, Hideo Kojima. <laughs> Maybe if people are interested in it, we can do that. Because a decade is very long. There's a lot of matches. The combo system actually isn't even that crazy in this game. The combos are very simple in this game. Oh, nice. Yep, now he's activated. Now, okay, okay. Yeah, ba Bala Mad KOF, and then also um, uh, the next year with Reynold as well. 
Oh. <laughs> Aswell loses all of his armor. It's just the funniest looking thing. Because he goes from like super, super cloth clothed to like just like the absolute most naked thing possible. <laughs> See, the combos aren't even that complicated in this game. You saw that punish literally just launch and then smack him. That's it. Uh oh, the wall's gone. Ring outs are a possibility for both players. Hit throw your body at them if your sword fails. Yep. I like these tactics. Of reason. <laughs> Almighty gets stopped. Wait, that might have been. Yeah, I was going to say that seems a little bit late. Oh. Mm, see, he, ex he ended his combo early just to make sure. He actually didn't even need the ring out here. He got him before he could. He just did the, he ended the combo early to try to set up a, a, a mix up and an unblockable it looked like. I'm assuming that was an unblockable, but uh, didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, actually one of the matches that I had was the Sonic Fox Goichi match. That was the one that I was going to pick. Just because I felt like the, the from Evo this year, the one that Goichi won, because I just felt like that overall, like combined together, it was just such a good match. Uh, especially, you know, I felt like Sejam and hearing Sejam and Tasty Steve on commentary together and just like the whole package of that match was super good. Well, Mr. Friday, it's completely different now. This is season one. So what you're seeing here is completely different. But Leffen versus Goichi was also super good. Yes, that is true. I mean, he's sitting pretty on this round for sure. Like, the skill is controlling it. Nice. Recognizing the stance change that he can 2A right there, right? Oh, got the hit. Okay. Punish that. One round of peace here in what could be a tournament winning game. Runs up. Soul charge. Trying to make it happen right now. Got the stun. Ooh, rocks it out. Goes to... Oh, checking him. Yeah, I mean it's fifty fifty situation. Twitch twitch ducking is gonna happen a couple of times there. Yeah, it's been so long since I've played Soul Calibur 5. I I've forgotten so much of it because I was so new to the game while I was playing it. And it so it was like super new to me, so it's it's easier for me to forget a lot of the stuff that happened. Oh my god! Uh, karaoke night will be coming very soon, Darth Proto Man. I almost was tempted to start this year with a karaoke stream, but I haven't done that yet. But there's probably one coming pretty soon. Maybe I'll even do one this week just for shits and giggles. Maybe on Friday or something like that. God, skill has been... He's one point away, isn't he, from taking this. This is match point for him. Woo! Okay. Oh, got him crouching. There it is. Oh my goodness, what a punish on that skill remaining throughout the entire thing. Where's skill from? As long as I can get you to hang yourself, I'll hit you with AAs, BBs. And then you'll start freaking out, and I got you. Don't worry, my guy. And skill just won the Soul Caliber World Invitational. And I, I oh, I didn't change the name at the bottom again. That's my bad. That's my bad. Ugh. Stream producing is hard work, man. <laughs> oh, man. All right. <sighs> Oops. Uh, let's leave that up. Let's take that this down and take that down there we go okay 
Oh, skill is from France. Okay, there it is. There, that's what it was. That's right. Yeah, no, streaming is, is, is a lot of work, man, especially when you're trying to do it yourself and everything. I'm going to try to learn a lot more techniques for streaming and try to improve my whole layout here as the year goes on. I'm probably going to do a lot more stuff to try to improve this layout, to make things a little bit easier, to change the layout based off of the kind of stream I'm doing. But a karaoke stream is definitely... Um, Coming soon, I've been thinking about doing one for quite some time again. <clears throat> um, also, um, t -t 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 Ultra Chen will be on tomorrow. It will be the UCTV Awards, where we talk about what our favorite matches of the year were, etc., etc., and of who our favorite players were, what our favorite event was, etc., etc. So uh, you definitely want to tune into that. That should be a lot of fun for the Ultra Chen TV Awards that we do every year. So um, don't want to miss that. Uh, what is that uh, investigation cone? What have you got here? Um... <laughs> Is this a, uh, is, what, what is this? This is a, this is a, um, this is a, a Phoenix Wright thing over here. Should I be worried what this is here? What is this? <laughs> Alrighty then. Okay. <laughs> oh man, that's too funny. <clears throat> okay, well, uh, I mean, it's under shit edgy says, so there you go. But uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and feed the cats. And uh, like I said, I'm going to try to make sure I stream a lot this year. I'm going to try to be very, very consistent. So if you guys want to encourage me and to and if you guys appreciate me trying to stream as much as I can this year uh, subscriptions follows donations bits all those things very much appreciated but let's go ahead and feed some cats this is Jasmine here right now she's just been sitting here staring at me this whole entire time but of course I've touched the camera and moved it so she thinks it's time for her to get food which is not wrong because every time I touch the camera she knows it's time to eat. So now she is just pacing back and forth waiting for me to give the signal that it is time to eat. She is just staring at me. If I make kissy noises then she knows it's time to eat. Oh, do you see the eyes kind of widen up? Do you see how her eyes like widened up a little bit? Man, she was just like, oh, oh, I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. All right. meow yawn like he meows and it turns into a yawn so he just keeps meowing you guys probably I mean obviously you can't tell from over there but my cats are like the two softest, puffiest cats, I swear. And these cats are like so soft. It's great. already before I'm ready to serve you so I can't serve you just yet I can't serve you just yet 
Well, you're too early again, Jasmine. You're too early again. I haven't finished getting the food out here. You're too early again. Nope, too early again, Jasmine. <laughs> too early again. Wait till I give you the... Oh my God, look at you, Jasmine. Here, come here. There you go. Mwah. Mwah. Good kitty. Oh. Oh boy, okay. Well, thanks guys for tuning in and hanging out. Like I said, we're going to be getting back to the full swing of streaming starting tomorrow and everything like that. So there you go. How do you keep the hair off the furniture? I don't. There is fur everywhere all the time. All the time. Is this going to affect the FGC in any way? What is this? What do, what, what do you have for me here? What the hell could this possibly be? Introducing the diverse board of Global Esports Federation comprised of world-class experts with significant breadth of experience from esports, traditional sports, corporate governance, technology, and business. I don't think the FGC will give a crap, to be honest. <laughs> I don't think the FGC is going to care. They're going to be like, whatever. Whatever governance of whatever, blah, blah, blah. We're going to do our own thing. We'll be fine. Uh... Yeah, Mr. Friday, just go to um, Classic Tetris on, on YouTube. I plan to do some Tetris analysis streams, too, if you guys are interested in that. Um, I'd, be, I'd be down to do some Classic Tetris analysis as well, just so you guys can see, you know, how they're thinking, what they're trying to go for, etc., etc. Should be a lot of fun to do. I've got a lot of ideas for streams this year, and it's crazy because it's hard to do all of them, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but in any case, uh, thanks guys for tuning in, and I'm going to go and say hi to my cats again. Hi, kitties. Hi, kitties. Good girl. Good boy. Good boy. Good girl. She's like, why are you touching me while I'm eating? Can I eat in peace, please? Please. Oh, man. All right. Have a good one, fat guy. Have a good one, Cone. See you later, dip. Uh, what is that? Oh, it is dip shit. Okay, see you later, dip shit. See you, Esther Wild, Hideo Kojima, Mr. Friday, Gun Tanks. Thanks, all you guys, for tuning in. And I uh, hope you guys are excited for a new year. Of uh, the Chenzor Dynasty, AGDQ is on all week this week. So if you're not watching this, make sure you support them as well. But until then, until tomorrow on the Tuesday show, which will be on twitch.tv slash TV. Have a good night. See you later, Big Zam. Well, hello and good night, Big Zam. <laughs> I will talk to you guys next time. Peace out.